Hi, I'm Sarah, and at 17, I was the new girl in a super prestigious school. This sudden move wasn't down to anything bad. It's not like I hated my old school or anything, but just like a winning lottery ticket that my father spent his amazing career to get. You see, my dad was a firefighter, and last summer there was a fire that completely burned down this mansion. My dad knew there was someone still in there, so he ignored all his teammates' warnings, then went into the burning building to rescue them alone. He found a girl around my age trapped in her room and rushed in to rescue her. But as he hugged the girl and ran out of the fire, a burning wooden beam fell on his leg. That was when my hero dad used his incredible strength he had left to get rid of it and carried the girl out of the building. Once he went out and checked if the girl was safe, he collapsed in his comrade's arms. He'd saved her life, but he was left with a pretty bad injury on his leg, which meant he couldn't do his job anymore. Being a fireman was all his life. He was so devastated that I couldn't even recognize him, until an unexpected fortune came to our family. The owner of the mansion, Mr. Adams, came to our front door one day. He was so grateful to my dad for saving his daughter's life that he offered him anything he wanted. Mr. Adams is a super wealthy businessman, but my dad didn't want his money. But there was one thing he agreed on. There's this private school. Well, it's not just any private school. It's where kids of politicians, celebrities, and big business tycoons go. Mr. Adams organized for me to go there too. OMG, it was so crazy. I'd be in the same class as the kids of A-list celebrities. I was so worried if I could fit in that new environment. But Mr. Adams said that his daughter Ashley went there too, and she would help me a lot. And I could see how happy my dad was after a long, devastating time. So, yes, my first day of school was so different than I imagined. Ashley had to delay going back to school for a month because she still hadn't recovered all her skin damage yet. So I ended up going alone. So, wow, this school was amazing. Seriously, take luxury and times it by about 100. Even the lockers were super expensive looking. I was afraid that if I scratched it, there was no way my parents would be able to afford the repairs. Not only were the facilities out of this world, but the students there were something else too. They looked so classy in stylish and expensive clothes. Even though the school had a uniform, it seemed like the only one wearing it was, well, it was me. Ugh, as bad as the uniform was, the thought of showing up in my cheap casual clothes was far worse. When I entered the classroom, everyone stared at me and looked me up and down. Then this glamorous girl walked over to me and said, So, who are your parents, newbie? I froze. I didn't expect this to be her first question, but it said a lot. Obviously, status here was important, so I knew that telling them my father was just a firefighter who would quit his job due to an injury, and I was here as a reward for his sacrifice, wouldn't cut it. I blurted out, Mr. Adams. Now where can I sit? All of them were surprised. Another girl showed me an empty space at the front table. Looking at their attitude, I guessed Mr. Adams had been a very famous man in their world. The other girl stayed out of my way after that, but I could feel this one girl's glaring eyes on me. I knew I wasn't done with her. The next day, when I was by my locker, she came over with her group of friends and said, Newbie, I know you're lying. Mr. Adams only has one daughter, Ashley, and she's my friend. Oh, no. This wasn't good. I tried to remain calm and replied, I'm more than his daughter. He owes me and my family. They all looked surprised as I walked off, but hey, I didn't lie. He really does owe my family. If they happen to think this is down to debt or power, well, then that's not my fault, is it? That was not all. This school had some weird rules. It doesn't have regular high school clubs like music, chess, or cheerleading. Nope. Here, it's all down to status. There's a club for the celebrity kids, a club for the politicians' kids, and so on. I found this strange. Could no one here be themselves without clinging on to their parents' fame? Anyway, one week into school, and I was told that I had to attend my club meeting after school. Oh, so they themselves put me in a child-of-something family group. I didn't want to be classified as a dissident by themselves, too, so I reluctantly go to the hall to attend. I sat at the back of the room. It seemed to be a club for business tycoons kids. Jeez, it was so boring. So boring, in fact, that I was pretty sure the kid sitting next to me was sleeping. 
A boy whose dad owns one of the mega big companies droned on about how his father donated millions to the school. Worse still, everyone clapped and cheered him as if he'd saved the world or something. After half an hour of this fakeness, I'd had enough. So, glided past the sleeping guy so I could escape. But being the clumsy girl I am, I accidentally knocked his earphone jack slip out. Cue the loudest rumbling of music. Oops. The boy sat up and calmly turned off his music. I was still standing there with everyone looking at me. When Mauve said, Sarah, isn't it? Are you going somewhere? At least you should tell us what your family has done for this school. Or you think you can just enjoy the perks of this club? Confused, I blurted out, It's not like I need all this drama anyway. Oh, is that so? Mauve glared at me. I was about to gather up my stuff and hurry out of there when the guy beside me stood up and said, She's right. No one cares about your dumb perks. This club is so boring it actually sent me to sleep. The room fell silent. This boy pulled me out of there. Wow. Who was this boy to say such a thing? I have to admit, I was kind of impressed, but also shocked. Out in the foyer, he turned to me and said, I'm Noah. It's nice to meet an interesting girl like you. OMG, this Noah boy was so handsome. Before I could even think up a reply, he turned around and walked off. And wait, had he just said that I was interesting? Anyway, I didn't need any friends here. They all seemed so fake. All I needed to do was put my all into my studies and make the most of the education on offer here. The best class for me by far was art, and more specifically, plaster making. I loved creating plaster figures. I just got so absorbed into the art of it. Once I was working on my sculpture, when this girl called Claire came up to me and whispered, Are you on your period? Come with me to my locker if you need clothes to change into. I looked down at my skirt, and yep, she was right. Of course, I didn't have a backup outfit. Seeing me flustered, she suddenly took her Chanel tweed jacket off and tied it around my waist. Oh my god, what if I got it dirty? My panic continued when I saw inside of her locker. Wow, all of the items in there must have cost at least four digits. She grabbed this pretty dress, then pushed me toward the toilets. I changed into the dress. I'd never worn anything so expensive before. I stepped out of the cubicle, and she smiled and said, You look amazing. I knew this color would complement your skin tone. Turns out that not only did she know loads about fashion, but she was also the sweetest girl. After that, I grew closer to Claire, but there was one thing I didn't understand. Why didn't an amazing girl like Claire have any other friends? One time during lunch, I asked her this, and she replied, My mom's a famous actress, but she was afraid having me would affect her career, so she had me in secret. So here, I'm a nobody. But it's okay, because now I have you, and my amazing clothes, of course. Claire had shared her secret with me, so it seemed only fair that I shared mine. So I told her all about my dad and why I was really at this school. She hugged me and told me my dad was a true hero and I deserved my place at the school, far more than any of the other kids. It felt good having Claire to confide in and was proof to me that not all the kids at this school were brats. Then one day, I walked into the class to see this pretty girl sitting at my table. Loads of kids surrounded her like she was royalty or something. She caught my eye and rushed over and hugged me and said, I'll be forever grateful for what your father did for me. I'm so happy to have you as a sister, Sarah. It turns out that she was Ashley, the daughter of Mr. Adams. She invited me to have lunch with her, and I didn't want to be rude. I mean, it was Ashley's first day back and all. I spotted Claire alone on our usual table, and she looked sad when she saw where I was. I was going to ask Ashley if she could join us, but then I noticed that Claire had already left the cafeteria. I felt so out of place as all they talked about was business news and their previous vacations to luxury hotels and private islands. Then suddenly this handsome boy came over and sat down next to Ashley. Wait, I recognized him. It was that Noah kid. Then he looked at Ashley and said, Hey, long time no see. Oh, he speaks, another girl said. I was beginning to think you only want to know us when Ashley's around. Noah replied, 
I have stuff I need to ask this girl. Another girl joked. Stuff involving a fiancé and his bride-to-be, is it? They all laughed, and I saw Ashley turn bright red. Then she turned to me and said, Sarah, this is Noah, my boyfriend. And Noah, this is Sarah, the girl my father has told you about. What? He is her boyfriend? I looked in his direction, and our eyes met. Sarah here again. So thanks to my hero father, I'd been transferred to a private school where all the rich and famous people's kids went. It was so amazing to study at this luxurious school, but the one downside was I felt like such an oddball there until Ashley, the girl whose life my father had saved, came back to school and was super friendly to me. Also, there was this one boy who caught my eye called Noah. He seemed so rebellious, but kind of friendly and normal to me somehow. But then, shocker, I found out he was Ashley's boyfriend. After introducing us, Ashley spotted Noah looking at me in a weird way and surprisingly said, Oh, so you guys know each other, huh? He muttered out, Yes, I saw this girl once in the club. Um, uh, what club was it? I couldn't remember the name of the club either, so I just sat there smiling awkward. Ashley replied, Oh, right, then stroked Noah's arm. To be honest, I felt kind of disappointed learning the fact that Noah and Ashley were a couple. Because, you know, I did think about Noah a lot since the day I first met him. He stood up to save me from the awkward situation. Then he even said that I was interesting. And yes, this guy was beyond handsome. But what was I thinking? This world is not for me. I should just live quietly, focus on my study, then leave with a good profile for college admissions. Nothing more. After that, I didn't see much of Noah around school. Well, at least I didn't until we ended up in the same new drawing class. In the very first study, our teacher arranged for us to have a trip to a local art museum so we could have first impressions with modern art. I wandered off and studied the different paintings. Then a painting caught my eyes and made me stop to look at it. It was of a wildfire. At first glance, I noticed the off-balanced color scheme and layout— Moreover, in the scene of the fierce fire, destruction, and death, I sympathized with the creatures running away from the fire. My heart suddenly lightened as I thought about the courage of my father. Suddenly, I heard a voice behind me. Looks intense, huh? The fire which enlightens is the same fire which consumes. I turned around, feeling a little surprised when I saw Noah. Then I smiled. You know Henry Emil? I've read some of his books. I blurted out, wow, you don't look like someone who likes to read about philosophy. Ugh, talk about a cringy comment. But Noah just smiled and said, so you like his painting? Yeah, my life has turned to a new page just because of a fire. After that, we analyzed the special features of the painting, and turns out, as well as being cute, he's pretty smart too. Then I looked up and saw him looking at me. I don't know, perhaps it was because we felt the same way about the painting, but I found myself feeling a special connection toward him. Since he kept looking at me like that, I pretended to cough and then Noah stroked my head and walked away. Oh dear, what did he just do? My heart was beating so fast and my face turned as red as a tomato, but then I just told myself that a pat on the head may mean nothing to him, right? Still, that night I couldn't stop thinking about him. Maybe he liked me, but no, I dismissed that thought. He was with Ashley, so I mustn't think about this anymore. The next morning at school, I was working on my plaster statue when suddenly someone swiped it. I watched in horror as it fell to the ground and lay there in a squashed-up mess. Oh, sorry, a girl said in a sarcastic tone. It's like you don't need all this drama and stuff around you. Jeez, I recognized her. It was that mauve girl, the one who hosted my former club. Are you obsessed with me that much? Leave me alone. I fumed while sitting there trying to save the shape of my statue. Oh, it's not that easy, babe. Let me tell you the first perk of our club, living in peace. 
All of her friends laughed along while Mob stepped up, aiming at my statue again. At that moment, another voice piped up from the back of our class. Do you want me to smash up yours too, or are you going to apologize properly to her? That's when I saw Noah standing next to Mob's statue, wobbling it back and forth. Noah, why do you keep protecting her? Is she important to you? You just need to know that if you keep causing trouble to her, you'll have me to answer. Then he continued to wobble the stretcher and said, Now, it's your call. Fine, I'm very sorry. She rolled her eyes at me before she stormed over to her statue. Noah stopped wobbling it, then walked over to me and tried to help me with my statue. His clumsiness just made the shape getting worse, but made my heart melted before my mind could help it. Sorry, seems like I ruined this thing more than she did. He looks at me with guilty eyes. No. You're helping me to make a fresh start instead of fixing it. He just laughed. We have to start too, Sarah. Do you see their angry eyes? We're in the same boat now. I looked over his shoulder to see the girls were fuming. But wait, Ashley was there too, and she looked not so happy. She walked over to me, hugged Noah around the neck, and said, Noah, I'm hungry. Can we go to the canteen? Then she turned back to give me a dirty look before they left. That look was her warning. For me. Okay, I definitely needed to keep my distance from Noah from now on. She had her reason for doing so, I could understand. Noah had never cared about anything at school, but now he even made friends with me. That must make her feel insecure. The problem was I just seemed to keep running into him. Speaking of which, after school I was getting my bike when he appeared. Feeling flustered, I thanked him again for earlier. He replied, Don't just say thank you. How about a coffee? Things with Ashley were hostile enough, so I replied, Sorry, Noah, I have a family thing. And also, it's a little awkward with, you know, Ashley, don't you think? At first, he looked confused, but then he shrugged and said, Okay, then walked off. Noah was such a sweet guy, but staying away from him was for the best, right? Besides, Claire had asked me to go over to her house to try out some of the new items that she just designed. We ate pizza, watched a movie together, and looked at the collection that she just finished. She photographed me in some of the clothes, and I posed like a professional model. We had so much fun. I had an amazing friend that was enough for high school life. No more other feelings, no more drama. But one day not long after that, when I was walking through the hallway at school, suddenly someone pulled my hand. Turns out it was Noah. He pulled me to the emergency exit and said, Sarah, stop being friends with Claire. She's not real. At first I was quite surprised, but then I cleared my throat. <clears> throat> You are not telling me who I can be friends with. I'm not a kid. Then he took his phone out and showed me the pictures of me wearing Claire's clothes. Huh? Why did he have these pictures? I said, so what? She had my permission to take these photos. But not for posting them on the forum. Your pics hit a million likes. What if you become famous? They will find out you're just a daughter of... He hesitated. I was startled as he said that. He must have known my secret. Noah showed me Claire's post. She posted my pictures on the creative fashion forum to promote the outfit she designed with the message, Even ugly ducklings can turn into swans when wearing these. Oh my god. What did she mean by that? In a detailed description, she even added my story? Telling that my family was poor, but my firefighter father still chose to risk his life to save others? We are not poor, and that was my secret. How could she use that to get people's compassion? She turned out to be worse than the others. She used me and laughed at me behind my back. Seeing my worried face, Noah reassured me that his family's company had signed a contract with Claire, so the photos would be removed from the forum soon according to the company's regulations. He saved me again, and this time it was from my best friend here. My only friend. I trusted her and told her all of my secrets— but turns out I was just a joke to her. From that day on, I avoided Claire. I didn't bother to confront her because I knew she would just try to fake her way out of it. One day I was sitting in the cafeteria with Ashley and a group of friends. Claire came to our table and said she wanted to talk to me. I was annoyed and didn't want to talk to her, so I ignored her. Claire looked confused and grabbed my arm and said, Please, Sarah, I want to know what's going on. I shrugged her off and continued to ignore her. Seeing that, Ashley immediately stood up in a sarcastic tone, said, Sorry, there's no private talk in this group. Then she looked at Claire. 
Oh, wait, you don't belong here. That's when the other girls in the group laughed at Claire. She just stared at me, but I ignored her. I was still really mad at her. She ended up bursting into tears and running off. After Claire left, Ashley stood up and said, Even a girl like Claire dares to hurt Sarah. That's totally unacceptable. So this weekend, my parents are away, so I'm throwing the party of the year. It's dedicated to Sarah. My family totally owes her, and I want the whole school to know that. So make sure you're all there. Wow. She was having a party in my name. I just wanted a quiet life, but maybe I did need this, so others could at least leave me alone. After everyone finished lunch and left, Ashley pulled me aside and whispered, Hey, everyone's supposed to wear a costume. It's just a tradition of ours. You know, royal kids. She winked at me, then left. I was freaking out about what to wear, but turns out I didn't need to worry. As soon after that, I received a parcel from Noah with the message to shine at the party. Noah was so kind to be this thoughtful, but honestly, I didn't feel very comfortable when he treated me this way. Anyway, I opened the box and saw Wonder Woman's suit. This costume was so beautiful, and I loved it. That night, I put on the costume and did my hair and makeup. I felt so awesome in my outfit and couldn't wait to go to the party and see everyone else's outfits. However, when I followed the staffs and walked in, I saw that all the other girls were in trendy dresses. What? What was going on? Why was no one else dressed up? I stood there in panic when I heard someone say, Ew, our Wonder Woman has arrived. The other girls laughed frantically, and they gathered around me and pulled me out into the middle of the room. I looked around to find Ashley, but the more I tried to look, the more terrified I got. They were all staring and laughing at me. I blushed in embarrassment. This was so humiliating. I couldn't believe that I was being pranked again by everyone in the school. I was about to run out of that party when the loudspeakers sounded on stage. Hey, Sarah here. So I thought that the kids at my school were finally starting to accept me. Ashley had invited me to her party. Not only that, but she dedicated it to me. Then Noah sent me this awesome Wonder Woman costume to wear it. I showed up at the party feeling great, but then my mood soon changed when I realized I was the only one there in a costume. The crowd gathered around me so I couldn't run away. I felt so humiliated and lonely. I didn't belong here. I felt foolish for ever thinking that I did. I searched the crowd for at least one friendly face but couldn't find one. This was awful. I knew I needed to get out of this nightmare right now. I desperately searched for the nearest exit and was about to push my way through the crowd to get to it. But then the big monitor behind me let out a crash sound and I heard the crackling of flames. I looked back and saw that a shadow puppet show was playing on the monitor. I stared in shock at the familiar scene in front of me. There was a mansion on fire, and then a firefighter burst into it and carried a young girl out. Then he collapsed in his comrade's arms. I watched as they showed another girl standing next to the fireman. She leaped up and down as money fell on her. I knew that the girl was meant to be me, and that Ashley was behind this. She was the only one who knew the story well enough, and the only one who could show the play here. The show went on, and I watched as a young man entered the frame with the young girl, and they kissed. Suddenly, the other girl came back on the screen and pulled the young man away from her. Then they ran off together. The ending scene was the young girl sitting alone and crying. The crowd booed and hissed at the screen. I stood there frozen. This was nonsense. I'd never stolen her boyfriend. Ashley must have misunderstood me and this was going too far. Well, actually not far enough for her. As to my horror, the show continued. Ashley appeared in front of the screen with her microphone. Suddenly, the spotlight was on me, and at the same time, Ashley said, Here she is, our real-life villain. Although it seems like she still thinks she's a hero. How could she do this to me? I trusted her and thought we were friends. All eyes were on me. They whispered, pointed, laughed, and threw dirty looks at me. I wiped my tears and tried to escape from the toxic crowd. That was when I bumped into Noah. Ashley might have misunderstood me, but how could Noah help her with that plan? 
What he did was far worse. I glared at him and said, Thanks for the costume. Are you satisfied now? He called my name and tried to say something, but all I cared about was getting out of there. It was the darkest day of my life, and I would never return to that school for monsters. No way. I explained to my mom what had happened, but I asked her to keep it a secret from Dad as I didn't want to upset him further, as he was still recovering from his injuries. So we told my dad that I was struggling with the work at the new school because I'd started so late. He supported me no matter what, but I know it kind of made him disappointed that I'd missed such a golden chance. I'm the daughter of the bravest firefighter. I will do my best to make him proud. I returned to my old school and realized how calm that world was in comparison to the rich kid's school. The only thing I did miss about that place was the plaster sculpture class. But it's okay. As I asked the art teacher for permission to start a plaster modeling club, she agreed, and I pinned the info on the notice board. No one seemed interested in it, but whatever. I was just happy that I could continue to make plaster models. The small club room was like a private domain, until one day Ben showed up. He walked in and asked, Is anyone here? At first this confused me, but then I noticed the tools in his hands and realized that he wanted to join the club. I smiled and said, Yes, me and Genevieve, welcome to our club. It turned out that Ben was a master at this, and he showed me loads of tips and tricks. Together, we nurtured our dreams of going to the same art college and being able to open an exhibition of our own. He was so sweet. He always bought us snacks to share, never got annoyed if I asked him to explain something multiple times, and he was a great listener. I really liked having Ben as a friend, but the one downside was being around him reminded me of Noah. I know he turned out to be a jerk, but I couldn't deny the fact that I'd liked him a lot. Then one time in club, things got awkward. Ben showed up with a bag of heart-shaped candy and started saying, Hey, Sarah, the thing is, I like... Uh Uh-oh, I knew where he was going. I liked Ben, but only as a friend. I couldn't let him confess his feelings for me, as that'd make everything awkward. So I interrupted him. Ben, I like you too. You're a great friend. Um, can you help me with this? Then I pointed at a section of my statue. Ben tried to say something, but I kept pretending to be busy with other matters. Then he just gave up and helped me in silence. After that, he didn't try to tell me how he felt again, and we carried on being friends as normal. It was best for everyone. High school ended, and all of our efforts led me and Ben to a top art college. I was so excited, but I was also afraid to open up and make friends with anyone again, as this hadn't worked out well for me before. Ben seemed to understand all of my feelings, so he was always with me. I was so grateful to have Ben there. He was an amazing friend and it was great being around someone who shared the same passion for art as I did. It was sweet that Ben cared for me, but at times he did take it a little far. Some of the other boys at college liked me, but they did not even have a chance to come close to me. I found out that Ben intercepted any gifts and cards they tried to send me and threw them in the trash. He even stopped them on the street when they tried to approach me on my way home, then demanded them to have a talk with him first. He took it so serious that I thought I was his little daughter. One time, when this guy told him that he'd meet me at all costs, Ben insisted on staying at my house so he could look out for me. I found the whole thing hilarious, and so did my dad. I guess how Ben acted looked odd to other people, too. Like, one time when we were having lunch, this guy stopped in front of our table and asked, Is he your boyfriend? If not, he has no right to act so clingy. To be honest, I didn't want to date anyone anyway. I didn't have time for boys. I wanted to focus on my art. So I grabbed Ben's hand and told the guy, Yes. He does have the right, so you better beware of him. I could see Ben blushing and smiling. He didn't still like me. Did he? The day of our final presentation arrived, and there were loads of talent agencies there to watch us. It could be considered as our very first interview. Recruiters were allowed to question us to make their employment decisions. It was so scary, but also exciting. Afterward, my lecturer told me that both I and Ben had received some great offers— including a company that wanted to hire the both of us. I immediately texted Ben to meet me on the college rooftop to celebrate. But when I saw him, I noticed that he looked sad. Okay, this made no sense. He should have been as excited as I was. I asked him, What's wrong, Ben? We can still work together. I will confirm the deal, and I can't wait to work with you. But Ben sadly said, Congrats, Sarah, but I'm so sad that I can't stay. You know I always want to be with you but I have my own dream to reach. His dream? 
I had never thought to ask about his dream before. I had just presumed it was the same as mine. Now I felt bad that I'd been so selfish toward him. Ben continued, I got an offer from a museum in San Francisco. They said I could develop my idea for my project there. That's my dream. Organizing my own art exhibitions. And I don't want to miss it. Could you come with me, Sarah? The offer he'd received was amazing. They must have been extremely impressed with him. But as excited as I was for him, I wasn't sure about going with him. There was no company in San Fran that wanted me, but I had opportunities here. Ben could see through my feelings. He suddenly took my hands and said, I love you, Sarah. You know that. Please give me a chance. I don't want us to be apart. I pulled my hands back. I can't, Ben. This is your dream, and you should go for it, but it isn't mine. I know you'll be successful, and you can come back one day and find me. I trailed off. Seeing my resolute attitude, Ben didn't say anything more, but just looked away. That afternoon, I realized we had to grow up from young dreamers and become warriors of our future. After all, the future looked bright, and I was excited to see where mine would take me. It's Sarah here. So my school and college days had come to an end. Now I was stepping out into the big wide world and trying to get my first job as a plaster statue maker. Today was an exciting but nerve-wracking day for me as I had a meeting with a famous fashion company. Apparently they were impressed with my portfolio and thought I was perfect for the job. So I was eager to find out what it involved and how a plaster modeler like me would fit in. First off, wow, the building was massive. The foyer was full of modern furniture and abstract artwork. I sat on the couch and waited, noticing how everyone looked so stylish with their trendy outfits and funky hairstyles. I felt a bit out of place in the dress I'd found in the sale, but I tried telling myself that I was here for my talent and not for wearing expensive outfits. After a few minutes, a nice lady came and said that the director was ready to see me in the meeting room. As I followed her there, I felt my heart beating like crazy. I couldn't believe that I had the opportunity to work with such a big company. For a girl who just graduated, this was a really big deal. But as soon as I entered the room, my mood changed. You will not believe who was sitting in the meeting room. It was Noah and Claire, my old classmates. So what, Noah was the director now? And he was the one who wanted to hire me? Was this maybe another sick joke or something? I thought my school dramas were behind me but now I was face to face with two people who'd stabbed me in the back. Noah stood up and said, Hi, Sarah. It's good to see you again. We've... Is this a joke? Are you both trying to make fun of me again? For your information, I'm not that girl anymore, so don't even think about it, I interrupted him with anger. Noah looked confused. This isn't a joke, Sarah. It was never in school, either. You're here because we know how talented you are. They were all liars. I trusted them once, but never again. I turned my back on them and was about to walk out the door when Claire stood up and said, I think she meant me. She's still mad at me because I used her story for my collection without asking her. Oh, so Claire remembered how she used my story, as if it was a joke just to raise the value of her collection. Claire continued, Sarah, please listen. I'm sorry I took your pictures for my project without asking you first. I was so focused on the project that I didn't notice the feelings of the people around me. I turned around and replied, Well, making fun of others isn't really art, don't you think? She shook her head and said, No, that wasn't my intention at all. Your story was inspiring, and I just wanted everybody to know about it. But I get it now. It was wrong of me. Can you please forgive me? This made me so mad. So I replied, Do you think a simple sorry will make up for it? You humiliated me. Claire came towards me, took my hand, and said, I know. Trust me, I've regretted it for years. I still regret it now. I looked right into her eyes and said, You really did hurt me that day. You know that? Claire replied, I know. Please give me a chance to make it up. Okay, so maybe she was sorry. I mean, she looked like she meant it. Besides, this wasn't school anymore. 
I at least needed to hear what she had to say. So I smiled at her and said, okay. She looked so relieved, then she hugged me. I noticed Noah smiling too, so I said, don't think that I forgot about that Wonder Woman costume. At first he looked confused, then said, wait, Sarah, that wasn't me. I didn't give you the costume. Wait, what? You didn't? Noah nodded and continued, of course I didn't. Why would I ever do that to you? We are on the same boat. Did you forget? Oh my god, I couldn't believe it. All this time and it wasn't him? I misunderstood him and the feeling of being betrayed had haunted me for years, but it was all Ashley. So, now that's cleared up, can we talk about the project? He asked. Blushing, I nodded. They started telling me about the project, and wow, it sounded amazing. I was totally blown away. Forget the usual skinny models in every fashion show, as they wanted me to create plaster statues that would show off the charm of the human body. Each statue would have a unique shape. Silk was the theme material for Claire's collection. She would work with me to create costumes that would suit each plaster statue. They offered me the job, and I said yes! This was really a big challenge for me, but I couldn't wait to make it happen. Claire and I threw ourselves into the project, and it wasn't long before we bonded over lunchtime takeouts and after-work coffees. I must admit, it was good having her around. I guess I missed her more than I realized. To my surprise, Noah was also pretty great. This may have been his family's company, but turns out he was a good boss. Whenever Claire and I couldn't agree on something, Noah would jump in and give us an even better option. He always had these crazy ideas that Claire and I would never have thought of. This one time, the three of us ended up working later than expected, so I volunteered to go and grab some food from the place around the corner. As I was walking, I heard Noah call my name. Turns out he wanted to keep me company. Then, when he saw me shivering, he took off his jacket and put it around my shoulders. My heart felt like it skipped a beat and I could smell his warmth around me. I'd forgotten what a sweet guy he could be. Uh-oh. Was I crushing on him again? But then a few days later, something happened. The three of us were having lunch when suddenly Noah's phone, which was lying on the table, rang. I could see on the screen that it was Ashley. Noah picked up the phone. Oh, hey, Ashley. Yes, okay, I'll be there in a minute. And then he hung up and said, sorry, ladies, I have to go now. See you tomorrow. Bye. And then rushed out of there. I immediately turned to Claire and asked, was that the Ashley who just called? Claire nodded. Yes, ma'am, the one and only. It's such a shame that a great guy like Noah has to marry an awful person like Ashley. Wait, what? Did Claire just say marry? I tried to keep a calm voice when I asked her. They're getting married? When? Claire replied. I think in the fall or something. I'm not really sure. Noah doesn't talk much about it. He's always quiet when it comes to this topic. Oh, great. I'd fallen for him all over again, only to lose him to Ashley. Again. I felt so disappointed but at least now I knew what I had to do. From now on, I'd keep my feelings hidden and concentrate on my work. No way was I getting on Ashley's bad side again. After a lot of hard work and effort, we completed the project on time. Not only that, but the exhibition was a major success. Claire's stunning outfits and my awesome sculptures worked so well together. Turns out we made a great team. Claire's costumes sold out, and she received loads of orders. As for me, my statues were auctioned off with sales far greater than expected. To congratulate us, Noah threw a party for our team at this swanky bar in town. It felt so good to let my hair down for once as I'd been working so hard of late. We had a really great time. Everybody was gathering on a table and was teasing each other, making jokes and just having fun. I probably should have slowed down on the cocktails as I soon ended up pretty drunk. After a while, Noah sat down next to me and asked me, So... Apart from being a talented sculptor, do you have any other hobbies? I replied, of course I do, duh. I, um, I like, um, I don't know, I laughed. He continued asking, what about food? Any favorite dish? And what about pets? Do you like pets? I laughed and replied, oh, wow, is this an interview or something? What's with all these personal questions? Noah smiled and answered, I want to get to know more about you as I find myself curious about you. I felt my face turn bright red. What did he mean by that? Did he maybe also have feelings for me? But then I quickly kicked all these ridiculous thoughts out of my head. He was engaged to Ashley, so he was just being nice. Noah gazed at me oddly, which confused me. I didn't know what to do or say, so I stood up and said quickly, I, I need to go to the restroom. 
but assumed I had too many drinks because I almost tripped. Noah held my hand and insisted on helping me. His hand felt so warm. I knew I should pull my hand away, but I just couldn't. To be honest, I just wanted to fall into his arms. Maybe it was the alcohol talking. The next morning, I woke up. Um, what the? This wasn't my room. I was in this luxurious, very modern room. The kind you see in five-star luxury hotels. Oh my god, where was I? I looked down at my body and, phew, still had my clothes on. So nothing happened, right? I took a deep breath to calm myself down and then quickly grabbed my purse, which was on a chair, and sneaked out of the room. Jeez, this apartment was huge. Where was the damn door? When I was still struggling to find a way out, I bumped into Noah, who just stepped out of the bathroom. What? Why are you here? I mumbled out. But then I looked around and spotted a big picture of him and his family. Oh, great. I'd spent the night at his place. Hi everyone, it's Sarah here. Yeah. So, so I, I had the ultimate blast from the past when I went to a meeting and ended up coming face to face with my old classmates, Noah and Claire. After years, we eventually had the chance to clear up misunderstandings. I was too hasty in concluding that they were all monsters who caused my past suffering. We let the past stay in the past and did a great job together. After that, I found my relationships blossoming between them both. But while Claire's was a growing friendship, with Noah there was some definite chemistry there. But he was engaged to Ashley, so I tried to keep my feelings hidden. At least that was until the night of the party when I drank way too much. So, here I was, in what must have been Noah's apartment. I was staring at him standing there in front of the bathroom. Before I could mumble out any sort of response, an angry girl burst in. Oh no, it was Ashley. She wasn't pleased that Noah was at home with the seem-to-be-drunk girl. He tried explaining to her that it wasn't what it looked like. That's when she took some photos from her purse and threw them on the floor. They were pictures of me and Noah from last night. There were some of us chatting at the table, one where we were laughing, and one of him helping me out of the bar and into his car. Oh my god, why did she have these pictures? Noah said he needed to change clothes first, then we could all talk it out. He led Ashley out of the room, but a few seconds later she stormed back in and yelled at me. It's you again, Sarah. I know you seduced my fiancé. It's not like that, I muttered out. I was drunk, and he was just being kind. There is nothing between us. These say otherwise, she pointed to the pictures. You think that because your dad saved my life that you're entitled to not only the same education as me, but my fiancé too? Well, you're not. You're nothing. She lunged at me and reached out to grab my hair. Luckily, Noah, who was pulling his t-shirt over his head, rushed into the room he grabbed Ashley and pulled her away from me. When I come over later, she better be gone, she screamed at him, before she stormed out of the apartment, slamming the door behind her. I wanted to tell Noah how sorry I was, but I couldn't find the words. He took my hand and pulled me out of his apartment. We got into his car, and he drove me home in silence. When he pulled up outside of my place, he finally spoke. Sarah, I'm really sorry about all this. Last night's a bit of a blur for me, but... I can tell you this. Everything I did is my true feelings. Because I love you. There's no one else like you. You're special. And I've always loved you since high school. You feel the same way, right? Oh my god! Noah had feelings for me too! So my mind wasn't messing with me. I knew it! For a minute I was so happy to hear that. But then reality hit me. He was engaged to Ashley. I knew we couldn't be together. So I reluctantly said, Noah... You're engaged to Ashley. You belong to somebody else. So we can't be together. Noah cut me off. I know. I know. We're only engaged because it was our family's decision for business stuff. I don't love her. Not like how I love you. Can you please wait for me? I will handle this. I was so confused. I was stuck in a love triangle that I never intended to be in. To be honest, I also had feelings for Noah. But I knew what kind of person Ashley was. If Noah left her for me, she would never stop trying to ruin my life. Sorry, Noah. I know what she's like. 
I still have the emotional scars from the last time she thought I was trying to steal you from her. I don't want to get involved in this drama with you and her. So please, let us just be friends. Noah was silent at first, but then he gave a solemn nod and said, Okay, if that's what you wish. I got out of his car and watched him drive away. I'd made the best decision, right? I couldn't be with a guy who was engaged to someone else. After that, I buried myself in work. Only having Noah as my boss was not so easy, especially when Ashley started visiting him almost every day at work. Ugh. If watching her be all over Noah wasn't bad enough, I also had to endure her childish games. One time, she had two cups of coffee in her hand and accidentally spilled both of them on me and my desk. The coffee was so damn hot. Luckily, I didn't get burned. She feigned concerned, but I wasn't fooled. I knew that she'd done it on purpose. Then another time, when I went to the restroom, I caught her writing bad comments about me on the mirror with lipstick. I mean, seriously? I asked her why she was doing this, and she smirked and said, You know why. Buckle up, as this is just the beginning. Then she laughed and went out of the restroom. Oh my god! How crazy she was! Turns out, she meant what she said. As a week later, I had a meeting with an important business partner. I was super nervous, so I went to my laptop to give my presentation one last scan through, and to my horror, the document had vanished. This made no sense. As it had been there last night before I went to bed, I'd triple-checked it. Somebody must have hacked my laptop. That's when I saw Ashley standing by the door with a scornful smile on her face. I instantly knew this was down to her. I whispered to Noah and Claire that I couldn't find the presentation on my laptop. They looked shocked, but Noah immediately explained to the partner that my laptop had a virus, so all the data had been deleted. So we needed to postpone the meeting. The partner looked furious and shouted at Noah, Are you kidding me? A virus? I expected your company to be more professional, but clearly I was wrong. I hope you understand the importance of this exhibition. And then he left the meeting room. Oh my god, this was so embarrassing. It was my entire fault. I let the team down. And now we had to face consequences because of me. Could things even get worse? After that, Noah asked Claire to leave the room. Then he turned to me and said, I know it's not your fault. Someone must have hacked your laptop. Don't worry, I will get to the bottom of this. It felt good knowing that he didn't blame me. He was such a sweet guy, which was exactly why I loved him. And worse still, I'd let him go so that Ashley wouldn't make my life a misery. But here she was, making my life one. Enough was enough. Ashley was a horrible person, and she didn't deserve a sweet guy like Noah. So before I stopped to think, I blurted out, Noah, I need to tell you something. I, I love you too, and I think we should give ourselves a chance. Noah looked at me with surprised eyes, but after an agonizing wait of silence, he said, Sarah, I, I'm really sorry. We can't. Ashley is the best choice for me. I hope you understand. His words hurt like crazy. How could he confess his love for me just a few days ago, and now tell me he wanted her, not me? Did he decide that his career was more important than love? But then, what did I expect? He was engaged. I felt like such a fool, so I nodded and said, I understand. Then I rushed out of there. I needed to take my mind off everything, and luckily for me, a new project with Claire popped up which involved Claire designing national costumes and me creating statues with poses to match. Plus, I got to design wheeled platforms so that the statues could move. This would be a big shot. I meant this idea was unique in the sculpture industry. One day, I was waiting outside of the building for Claire to go get her car as we were going for dinner. When I heard someone call my name, I turned around, and to my surprise, I saw that it was Ben. Sarah, it's so good to see you. He smiled. I stared at him in shock. Wow, it's been so long. When did you come back? Why didn't you text me? He smiled and said, well, I always knew I'd come back. Sarah, I, at that moment, Claire arrived. She smiled and looked out the car door to greet Ben. I regretted goodbye to him. So Ben and I switched numbers and arranged to meet up soon. It was great to have my best friend back here by my side. Claire grabbed my arm and said, ooh, who's he? He's very handsome. I laughed at her. He's my friend, Ben. So you like him, huh? Ah, his name is Ben. I think I have found the prince of my life. You have to help me, Sarah. I smiled and gave her an okay signal. She became really excited and couldn't stop asking about him during the meal. I thought they would become a cute couple. That weekend, I arranged to meet Ben at a restaurant. Ben was still very attentive and enthusiastic as before. It was so good to catch up with him, and we talked about our dream to one day open our own exhibition together. 
Then he said, do you remember our promise? Of course I remembered it. We once promised to open an exhibition together. Then Ben continued, my work in San Francisco had problems. Things didn't go well as I expected, but I've learned a lot. Now I'm confident enough to come back to find you and make our dream come true, but I need your help. I was so surprised by his suggestion. At the time, I was so busy with work that I wasn't sure how I'd manage both. But looking at Ben's face, I knew I couldn't turn him down. So after thinking for a while, I smiled at him and said, yes, of course, let's make our dreams come true now. Okay, so combining both my job and working on this project with Ben was going far better than expected. I didn't tell anyone at work about my sideline project, though. I mean, they didn't affect each other or anything, but I still didn't think it would go down well with my colleagues. Then one evening, when I was around at Ben's working on the project, he turned to me and asked, Do you remember my question? I'm still waiting for your answer. I could tell from the way he was looking at me that he meant the one after graduation when he'd asked to be my girlfriend. Wow, did this mean he still liked me, even after all this time? Ben is literally a lovebird, but what could I do? I myself am a lovebird too, spending my love to Noah all these years, even when he always had Ashley with him. I don't like Ben in that way. But I also don't want to lose him as a friend. It was too hard for me to say something now. Ben could see me feeling uncomfortable. He laughed and said, It's okay, Sarah. Take your time. I can wait. Then we continued to discuss the project. Actually, I felt very guilty for not clearly rejecting him and giving him false hope. But I didn't want to hurt him. He was my best friend. So we'd be okay. Right? Hey, it's Sarah again. So things between Noah and I became complicated after I blurted out to him that I wanted to be with him and he completely shut me down. This wasn't what he'd said a few days before this. So now I was so confused. I tried to put all my focus into work, but then I reconnected with Ben and turns out he still loved me. After I left Ben's house, I thought things over. Back at graduation, I couldn't properly determine what my feelings were for him. Now I realized that my heart didn't belong to him. It belonged to Noah. I knew how sensitive Ben was, and the last thing I wanted was for my rejection to upset him. There was only one thing for it. I'd find him a new girl to focus on. Someone sweet and funny. Yep, I was talking about Claire. She was perfect. I put my plan into action by inviting both Ben and Claire to go bowling. Then I showed up a little late so they'd have one-on-one time to get to know each other. My plan looked like it worked because when I arrived, Claire and Ben were drinking sodas and talking. Only when I joined them, I realized that it was Claire doing most of the chatting while Ben barely said a word but just politely forced his smile without looking in her eyes. He was just awkward meeting someone new, right? Afterward, Claire sent me dozens of messages saying how cute she thought Ben was and how well they got on. I figured that Ben just needed a little more time to get to know Claire. Then he'd see how perfect she was for him. Anyway, back to my Noah problems. Seeing him at work after my failed confession was hard. I tried to be normal around him, but every time I caught a glimpse of him, my heart ached. I tried avoiding him as much as possible, but I just kept bumping into him somehow. I was on my way home from work when my car stalled. I was about to call for help, but as I was on the phone, I noticed Noah's convertible car pulled up alongside me. Then he said, get in the car, I'll take you home. I was a bit confused, but I didn't want to be stuck there alone this late and waiting for hours. So I got into his car. At first, there was this super awkward silence. Noah just kept quiet and drove, but then he hesitated. Sarah, um, I'm sorry about what happened. I, um, I never wanted to make you sad. I, I understand, Noah. You don't need to explain anything. You're an engaged man, so I was just being dumb. Another silence came between us. In my life, his car became the stuffiest place I'd ever been. He pulled up outside my house. I forced a smile and mouthed thanks before I got out of his car to walk home. But it only took a few steps before a hand suddenly pulled me back. Sarah, it's not like that. Actually, Noah was about to say more when suddenly a voice came from behind me. Sarah, why are you so late? And who is this man? It was Ben. In all the commotion, I'd completely forgotten we'd made plans for him to come around this evening to discuss the project. I replied, he's my boss. My car broke down, so he kindly helped me out. Ben stared at Noah and said in an unfriendly voice, Oh, thanks for taking my friend home. Now you can go. Then he pulled me forward. I just turned around and waved to Noah. Ben's attitude was so strange. He was normally very polite. But why was he rude to Noah? What was wrong with him? 
He was in a vile mood, and as the night went on, this only seemed to worsen. We had consistently conflicting opinions. I wanted to add creative and alternative ideas to the plaster statues, but Ben rejected all those ideas. I knew he was old-fashioned and was unsure about my creative suggestions, but he wouldn't even hear me out. My ideas don't make plaster art any less valuable. Instead, it makes them stand out, which could attract younger audiences. He sneered, then said, Your views on plaster art have changed, and so have you. What? Why did he think that? I gave him an example to let him understand what I was doing, that in my company's upcoming project, the statues would be dressed like a real person, and even they would be able to move. Ben panicked and said, Oh my god, it was an offense. If your statues are dressed in those costumes, how can people see the beauty of sculpture? The more I tried to explain this to Ben, the angrier he got. Then he yelled at me. Sarah, that boss and that damn company have changed you. I shouted back, why are you so stubborn? Ben continued, I don't think I need your help anymore. I'll do the project myself. Then he left. What? I couldn't believe this. I've been working my butt off trying to juggle work and this project. Besides, he'd asked for my help in the first place. Ugh! I agreed to work with him just because I respect our friendship, and now what he said? Okay. It was fine. I was too tired, and I didn't have time to go argue with him. After that, I spent all my time on the company's project with Claire. Meanwhile, I also heard from Claire that Ben's project had problems. It seemed he was having financial difficulties implementing the project. I felt a bit guilty because I promised to contribute money with him to do this project. But now, it was his choice. So, he had to deal with it himself. Fortunately, he now had Claire by his side, so I hoped she could help him through this difficult time. Finally, after months of plenty of sweat and tears, the launch day of the new collection arrived. Due to the success from the previous project, this fashion show was much more crowded. Mostly fashion enthusiasts and local plaster lovers. Then the show started, the lights went out, and I held my breath as my statues moved along the catwalk. The light from the platform combined with the spotlight made them look like they were giving off an aura. It was such a success, and a huge number of orders were placed. Claire and I smiled happily together, so our efforts over the past few months had paid off. At the end of the show, Noah thanked the audience and the press. Then he invited me and Claire onto the stage and introduced us. He excitedly told everyone that the designer of the collection was Claire, and all these statues and the idea of making them move were all my own. Everyone was in awe, looked at me admiringly, and congratulated me. Receiving such compliments, it felt like I was on top of the world. Suddenly, there was a journalist who wanted to ask me some questions, and of course, I agreed. I've received information that the idea about your statues are stolen, and I have evidence. Then he showed everyone photos of statues that looked exactly like my blueprints. So, could you please tell us if this is true or not? He asked. What? What was he asking? All of these statues were my own ideas. Everyone started talking. I heard some comments such as, Oh, it's unbelievable. So much for her ideas being unique. And if that's true, are the costume ideas also stolen? Then a series of flashes and microphones pointed at me and Claire. I was dumbfounded. I didn't know what to do. Suddenly I felt someone pulling on my hand. It was Noah. When we were out of the room, he said, My driver will take you home. I have to get back to deal with this. Noah, trust me, they are all my ideas. I'd never steal anyone else's. Sarah, I know that. I will find out who's behind this. The news that I was the idea thief spread like wildfire, and each day, fresh calls came in to cancel their orders. This was awful. Claire and I had worked so hard on that project, and now it all seemed for nothing. Worse still, if this issue didn't get sorted soon, no one would ever want to work with either of us ever again. The company was also suffering. Their reputation had declined, along with their finances. That made me feel extremely guilty, even though I was just a victim of this vandalism. I just couldn't figure out how my blueprints were leaked as only the people in our group knew about them. Could one of them betray us? I scratched my head thinking about this. I was desperate to know if Noah had any news about this, so I went to his office. As I walked to the door, I heard Claire's voice. Don't press him this hard, please? Then Noah replied, Ashley knows it was Ben who did this. She's certain Sarah was the one who revealed all the blueprints to him. If something isn't done about this, her family will withdraw their company shares and I can't let that happen. I couldn't believe what I just heard. How painful it was when being stabbed in the back. It turns out Ben did it. I mentioned my ideas to him before, but I just said a little bit about it. How could he make an exact copy? I immediately texted Ben to ask to meet him at the coffee shop near my company. As soon as Ben arrived, he made a guilty face. 
Just waiting for him to sit down, I angrily looked at him and said, Did you really do it? He looked guilty and admitted that, when his project came to a standstill because he needed money, Ashley appeared and said she'd help with one condition. He had to help her ruin my project. As well as the money, he wanted me to realize that my crazy creations, well, as he called them, weren't good for my career. So he agreed to Ashley's demands. I didn't do it just for my exhibition, Ben continued. I want you to leave that company, leave Noah, and then we can start over. This wasn't for you to decide. I know you despise the direction I've chosen to take my artwork in, but that doesn't give you the right to do what you did. I trusted you, and you destroyed my career. And what for? For some money? It wasn't like that, Sarah, he replied. How did you get my blueprints? I tried to control my anger and asked. I, I approached Claire, Ben said, falteringly. He took advantage of Claire's feelings and trust and dragged her into this whole mess. I couldn't control it anymore. I shouted, You're a coward! Do you know that Claire is still begging for you even though she knows you took advantage of her? Ben looked quite shocked. He stammered, Is that true? Why is she- Then he had a guilty look on his face and said, Please stop her. I don't want her to throw her career away because of me. I shrugged and said, But it's fine for you to destroy mine. This is your doing, so go and handle it yourself. Then I immediately left. That night, I couldn't sleep. I lay in bed thinking about what just happened. Turns out Ben wasn't the guy I thought he was, and I never wanted to talk to him ever again. I was even more surprised that Ashley was the one behind this. I felt so low. I had nothing left. I'd lost the man I loved, my promising career, and I'd been betrayed by my supposed best friend. I'd also introduced Claire to him and messed things up for her too. After the worst night's sleep ever, I woke up and knew what I needed to do. So, I went straight to Noah's office and resigned. After this incident, I was unable to continue working at the company. I really hoped that after I left, Ben and Claire wouldn't be held responsible anymore. Then I said, it was me. I revealed the detailed blueprint to Ben. Don't blame him. Blame me. His face turned red when he said, what? How could you? Unexpectedly, you dare to sell the company outright because of your lover? I have nothing more to say to you. Go out. His words were like sharp knives, stabbing into my heart. I guess a part of me hoped he wouldn't believe me and wouldn't let me go. But turns out I was wrong. There was nothing left for me here now. As I walked out of his office, I stood helplessly against the wall, then burst into tears. I couldn't do anything more. So, I stopped crying, then went over to my desk and packed up my things. That night I lay in bed in a daze until I fell asleep. The next morning, my ringing phone woke me up. I couldn't believe what I saw. It's Sarah here with the final part of my story. Trust me, you don't want to miss it. So in the last episode, I found out that Ben had betrayed me and in doing so ruined my career. So I took the blame and left my job, but I had no idea what I was meant to do next. My ringing phone woke me up. What was going on? I drowsily reached for it, then saw tons of messages from my friends and colleagues. I skimmed through them and to my surprise, they all included the same link. Okay, this was strange. I clicked on it and found that it was a video of Ben and Claire. I pressed play and in it, a crying Claire admitted that she was the person who had revealed my design to Ben. And Ben said that led on by personal reasons he'd slandered me for being a copycat. Both of them apologized to the company and to me. I scrolled down, there were thousands of comments below their video, and most of them were negative, calling them traitors and so on. I called Claire to check on her but her phone was off. She was probably avoiding all of the horrible comments. I hoped she was with Ben now, and they could rely on each other to get through this difficult time. After hearing that Claire was begging for his fault, Ben must have realized that he was terribly wrong, then came to her to correct everything. So, the truth was out, but I didn't feel good about this. Instead, all I felt was sad. Noah thought I was capable of betraying him, when this whole vindictive plan had been Ashley's. At that point, I saw tens of messages and missed calls from Noah, but I didn't want to answer just to hear him feeling sorry for me. It hurted me so bad. 
thinking that when the incident happened, all he cared about was her demand and her family's shares in the company, and that I was nothing to him but a betrayer. My heart ached. Then suddenly there was a knock on my door. I opened it to find Noah standing there. He was panting and his shirt was damp with sweat. What? Why are you here? I asked. As soon as seeing me, he hugged me tightly. What's wrong? I asked. After some seconds, he said, You didn't answer, so I was afraid something bad had happened. You were sad and I was so cruel and... I just smiled at him. See? I'm totally good. Then I asked him to come in. At least I should hide my feelings and treat him like a friend, right? We sat on the couch and Noah kept staring at me. I joked, Is there anything on my face? He said seriously, Sarah, I'm so sorry. I watched the video this morning and it's all my fault for not believing you. I replied, Yeah, that hurt, but you're the boss. So you did what you had to do. Without letting me finish my sentence, he continued, No, there was no excuse for not believing you. Ben texted me last night and told me everything. He said he loved you, but you don't feel the same and this made him act like a jerk. So now, no one knew the truth, but for what? He had Ashley and he was marrying her. I smiled at him and said, It's okay. It's all over. You should care about Ashley more than you thought. This might not happen if she didn't feel insecure that much about your relationship. You have Ashley, so take care of her. He was flustered and then tried to explain, Sarah, please hear me out. I want you. I always have. I only turned you down because Ashley threatened me. So it turned out that Ashley threatened to destroy my career and make my life a misery at all costs if he dared to break up with her. That's why I turned you down. I know she really means what she says, and I just want to keep you safe away from her. Little did I know that Ashley tried to wreck your life regardless, he said. Then he gave me a determined look and continued, Sarah, I tried to ignore my feelings for you, to please my family once before when we were in high school, and I almost lost you again for that damn family company. But now I realize that without you, everything is meaningless. Please forgive me. I couldn't believe this was happening. Finally, we could be together, right? We'd both wasted enough time, but could it really be that simple? He could see me hesitating and immediately grabbed my hand and insisted I go with him somewhere. I asked him where, but he just smiled, patted my head, and said I'd know soon enough. I was kind of confused, but looking at his determined eyes, I knew I could trust him. As we pulled up to this impressive mansion, I realized that I'd been here before. Back at the party where Ashley humiliated me. This was her family's home. I was hesitant, but he assured me it'd be okay and led me inside. There I saw Mr. Adams sitting on the couch and reading the newspaper. I turned to Noah and whispered, What are we doing here? He looked right into my eyes and said, Getting you the justice you deserve. Mr. Adams heard the noise and looked back, seeing me and Noah. He was kind of surprised. Noah, are you here to find Ashley? She's still in her room. And is this lady... Yes, this is Sarah the daughter of the fireman who saved Ashley's life. Mr. Adams gasped in surprise, then said, Oh, it is you. How is your father? I smiled politely and said, It's nice to meet you. My dad is fine. Thanks. Then he asked me some questions about my dad and my job. He was so surprised to know that I was working in Noah's company. Then Noah said, Mr. Adams, I have something to say. And then he told him everything about how Ashley had teased me five years ago and the reason why I moved back to my previous school. Then he told him how she'd planned to ruin my career. Mr. Adams was furious. He immediately called Ashley to come downstairs. Ashley's face was priceless. When she stepped down and saw me sitting in her house, she muttered out, Wh What are you doing here? Mr. Adams told her to sit down, then said, Tell me what you did to Sarah. Now. She yelled back, Dad, nothing. Then she turned to me, First, you stole my fiancé, and now you're slandering me to my own father? You're such a liar. Mr. Adams angrily said, Stop lying, Ashley. Noah told me everything, and I believe him. Sarah's father saved your life, and as a result of his injuries, he had to give up the job he loved. Yet, you did this to his daughter? Why? Ashley looked furious. It seemed that her dad had never scolded her before. She shouted, Yes! I did everything, but she betrayed me first. I thought we were friends, but she tried to steal Noah from me back at school, and she's still trying to do it now, even though she knows we're engaged. At this moment, Noah spoke out. It's all my fault, so stop blaming Sarah. Back then, I didn't stand up for her, but I won't be that cowardly again. Ashley held back her tears. Honestly, I felt bad for her, so I motioned Noah to stop talking. He just held my hand tight and turned to Mr. Adams, then continued, 
I didn't dare to confess my feelings because I was scared that you would withdraw your shares. But now I don't want to hide my love anymore. For me, the engagement was just a business thing. I don't love Ashley. Sarah is always the one I love, and I want to cancel the wedding. No matter what you do, Mr. Adams, I'll accept it. Mr. Adams sighed. Sarah, on behalf of my daughter, I'm so sorry for what she did to you. Tomorrow, I'll organize a press conference to officially announce the truth to the public and vindicate you. Then he looked at Noah and continued, And Noah, don't worry about the company. As for me, work is work, and it doesn't relate to personal affairs. Then he turned to Ashley. Remember, Ashley, you can't force someone to love you because this will bring you nothing but pain and turn you into someone you don't want to be. The next day the press conference was held, and the room was packed with journalists. Mr. Adams officially confirmed that Ben and Claire's confession video was true, and I was innocent. He also affirmed my talent. He said that he wouldn't investigate this more because Ben and Claire were also talented artists who made one bad lapse in judgment, and as a clear-sighted investor, he would keep facilitating young, talented creators. He didn't mention anything about Ashley's fault, but then this was expected, as she was his daughter. On the way back home, I received a video message from Claire. Contrary to the complicated situation here, Claire and Ben were enjoying a trip on a remote island. Through all this mess, they'd found love, and I was so happy for them both. I did always say that given time, they'd make the perfect couple. Seeing how happy they were reminded me of my relationship with Noah. We loved each other, but couldn't be free to show it like they do. I avoided to face him, as technically, he was still engaged to Ashley, and the last thing I wanted was to be a wrecker. Then one evening, Ashley messaged me, saying, I'm Mad Terrace Cafe. I have something to say to you. Don't keep me waiting. Ugh, what could she possibly want to say to me? I was so curious, though. So, I went to meet her. I arrived to find her and Noah sitting at a table and chatting to each other. I was kind of worried, and my legs seemed to be stuck to the ground. I didn't dare to walk toward them. She called me out to let me see how they looked good together, didn't she? I was about to leave, but at that point, Noah saw me and he immediately came toward me and led me to the seat. Ashley said to me, You see? We are back together. I should know how ridiculous she was before agreeing to come. Now I stuck myself in this humiliating situation. Suddenly, Ashley laughed out loud and said, <laughs> Just kidding. Don't be so serious. Look, I'm sorry. I behaved badly and disappointed my father. So I've decided that you can have Noah. Then she smiled, but don't expect me to wish you happiness or anything. To my surprise, Noah turned me around to face him and said, We are no longer engaged. Now I'm officially yours, Sarah, if you let me. I almost cried happy tears when Noah asked me, and I never thought that I finally could say yes to him right in front of my used-to-be enemy. Three months later, everything returned to some sort of normal. Everyone in the company knew that Noah and I were dating, and they all were happy for us. I spent most of my time sculpting, and it was great to follow my passion. As for Ashley, news is she's doing a master's course in England. And as for Claire and Ben, well, their love continued to blossom so fast that after just months of being together, they announced their wedding. Noah came with me to the ceremony, but as soon as we got there, he had to rush off to solve some issues at the company. I was kind of disappointed, but I tried not to show it, as it was my best friend's wedding, and I was so happy for them both. Then Claire threw the bouquet, and as the belief goes, I wanted to be the one to catch it and marry next. We were all ready to leap for it, but then Claire turned back and walked away. We were so confused. What was she doing? Then she walked towards someone. It was Noah. Noah? He was back from work? She gave him the bouquet, and he immediately ran toward me. And to my surprise, he got down on one knee, handed me the bouquet, pulled out this amazing diamond ring, and said, Sarah... I don't want to lose any more time due to my dumb mistakes. I want to protect you and spend my life with you. So what do you think? Will you marry me? I couldn't believe my eyes. Noah had this whole thing planned. It was so romantic. I blushed and obviously said yes. Then to cheering and applause, we kissed. Now I'm engaged to the man of my dreams, and hopefully no more obstacles will get in the way of our love. But if they do, well then I say bring them on, as love conquers all. Hi guys, I'm Austin, and I'm a 23-year-old college student. I guess my school years went by pretty smoothly, as I had my best friend Jake by my side. When we're not partying and living large, 
Me and him would work part-time at this local restaurant. The pay was pretty dismal, but it funded some fun nights out at least. My story starts as many do, with a cute girl. And I'm talking Ariana Grande pretty. Me and Jake first spotted her one day in the coffee shop that we always dropped by on our way to work. Neither of us could quit staring at her. She must have noticed us too, as instead of leaving, she turned back, smiled in our direction, then walked over to the counter and ordered another drink to go. She was obviously doing this because she wanted to talk to me, so I rushed over there to start a convo. The problem was Jake tagged along too and offered to pay for her drink. Ugh. She seemed flattered, smiled, then thanked us both. Then I was about to ask her for her number, but she rushed off as she said, Gotta go. My Uber's here. It was such a bummer. All I knew about her was that she was the hottest girl ever. And her name was Darcy. Well, that was the name written on her takeout cup. Feeling a bit deflated, me and Jake walked back to our table. But as we passed the table she'd been sitting at, we saw a phone. I presumed it was hers, and she left it there. So I lunged for it before Jake could. He looked so annoyed. Ha! Now the chance to see her again is mine. The phone was locked, but I was sure she'd call any minute now. I wanted to wait for her to come back and look for it, but I had to get to work. I kept the phone in the pocket of my apron throughout my shift. You know, just in case she called. And also so Jake wouldn't get his hands on it and try and steal my girl. During our break time, I sat down with Jake and we looked at the phone for a bit. Yeah, I know it was locked, so there wasn't much to see. However, even on the lock screen, we could see there was a picture of a brunette girl. Why would she have another girl as her wallpaper, though? Could this be her girlfriend or something? Nah, I seriously needed to quit overthinking. I'd seen the way she smiled at me. She totally liked me. This probably was just an old picture of her when she had brown hair. Finally, as I was finishing my shift, the phone rang. I cleared my throat, then in my sexiest voice answered with a, Hey there. Only to my surprise, she started screaming at me, calling me a thief. I tried explaining that she'd got it all wrong, and I'd meet her at the coffee shop to settle things down. She sounded so cranky, and not at all like the mild-mannered girl from earlier. Then again, I would have acted crazy too if I lost my phone. After the shift, me and Jake walked back to the coffee shop, and as we approached the place, I pulled out my phone and called the number earlier to ask where she was waiting. But then I saw a big guy pick up his phone instead. I was terrified, so I shoved Darcy's phone to Jake and told him to go return it. He didn't know anything and excitedly grabbed it and ran over, only to be stopped by that guy in front of the coffee shop. He asked, aren't you the one who stole my phone? Jake was puzzled and looked at me for help, and we just mumbled out that it wasn't, that it was some pretty girl's phone. She left it behind so we thought we would find some way to give it back to her. Then the man said, no, it's not any pretty girl's phone. Don't be sly. We've looked at the CCTV and saw what you did. It was a mess. So are you telling me that we couldn't see our dream girl again, but be caught up in this stealing chaos instead? This sucks. Things got even worse when this big guy put Jake in a headlock. Luckily, a woman walked toward him and said, It's okay, Tim. We can talk this out. Well, he wasn't wrong anyway. I am a pretty girl. I'll take care of it from here. Then she gestured to him to go wait in the car and leave us three alone. She told us her name was Chelsea and that the scary-looking guy was her younger brother. She gave us a chance to explain what happened. Then she told us what was shown on the surveillance cameras. In the end, we realized what actually happened. While we'd been talking to Darcy at the counter, Chelsea and her brother must have come in and sat at the table Darcy had been at. Then they quickly changed their minds and switched tables, but Chelsea left her phone there by mistake. Once this Chelsea girl realized it was all a misunderstanding, she kept on twirling her hair around her finger, and I'm sure I saw her wink at me. Was she flirting with us? I mean, she was kinda cute, but she's surely older than us, like around 30-ish. Then she said, so how about we go hang out sometime? As I see it, you owe me a coffee at least. Was she being serious? I couldn't go on a date with her. I don't feel comfortable dating someone that much older than me. And what about Darcy? She's all I had in mind right now. I mean, I could always go and tell my brother that you guys really stole my phone, she smirked. Was she joking or being serious? I didn't know, and I wasn't going to chance it. So I spluttered out, sure, coffee will be good. 
We exchanged phone numbers with her. Later, she texted us to set up the times and places. I didn't want to meet her, so on the day of the date, I phoned Jake up and feigned being sick and told him he'd have to go alone. To my surprise, he didn't seem to mind. Instead, he sounded excited about it. Then, after the date, he came straight to my dorm, saying he wanted to check up on me, but I knew it's just an excuse. All he did was go on and on with me about how much fun Chelsea was and that she was rich in stuff, so it wasn't just a simple coffee date, but she took him to this fancy restaurant too. I didn't expect Jake would be like that. I'm glad he enjoyed it, though. Anything so I wouldn't have to go on a date with her. This went on for a while, and soon they seemed pretty serious. Whenever Jake spoke about her, he went all gooey eyes. So my boy was in love. She clearly cared about him too, and made it so he didn't have to work at the restaurant anymore. I was happy for Jake. I truly was. And also relieved I didn't have to date Chelsea. But I also felt down about it all. He was in love while my dream girl was out there somewhere, and I didn't know how to find her. And that's when my luck changed. I was at work carrying the drinks over to a table, when to my surprise, I saw that Darcy was sitting there. I must have been gawping at her as she laughed and said, Hey, the Coke's mine. Blushing, I passed her the Coke, then said, I don't know if you remember, um, but we met a few weeks ago in the coffee shop around the corner. Sure, she smiled. It's nice to meet you again, coffee boy. She was so cute and sweet. There's no way I could let her slip through my fingers again. So I checked to make sure my boss wasn't looking. Then I asked Darcy for her number. She wrote it on a napkin and passed it to me on her way out. I was so excited, I fist-pumped the air. Through our messages, I discovered she just started an internship around the corner, and she really wanted to impress them so they'd offer her an official job. I was happy as this meant I would get to see her loads. Every time she came into the restaurant, I tried my best to make a move with her without letting my boss notice. One time, I gave her a free dessert, then said, Something sweet for the sweetest girl I know. Cheesy, I know, but girls love that kind of stuff. There were sparks flying everywhere. I knew she felt it too. I just needed to find the courage to ask her out. Then one day, suddenly Chelsea texted me, asking why I never came to see her. I thought this was odd. So I replied that I thought her and Jake were kind of official now. To my surprise, she replied, Come on, you still haven't properly made it up to me after stealing my phone. You know the cops wouldn't be too happy to hear that either, right? Or I could just tell my brother. I didn't want to get in trouble with either her giant of a brother or the cops, so yeah, I agreed to go on a date with her. We met at the same coffee shop where this whole phone drama started, as she said it was close to her work. This time, she introduced herself as the marketing manager of some big company. Wow, okay, that's impressive for her age. She's beautiful and successful. Maybe I really have been a bit rude to this respectable woman, so I decided to sit back and hear her out. But the next minute, she was like, Austin, I've loved you since first sight. She grabbed my hand. Jake's a sweet guy, but he's not you. What? She didn't even know me. She was crazy. And how could she do this to Jake? Then suddenly a group of people walked into the cafe. She said they were her employees and waved them over, then told them, Everyone, this is my boyfriend Austin. I glared at her, but I had no choice but to awkwardly greet everyone just to get it over with as quick as possible. But then I saw a familiar face in the crowd. No way. Hey, it's Austin here again. So I met this hot girl called Darcy that I really like, and I think she really likes me too. But then a phone mix-up meant I had to date this cougar called Chelsea, who was also dating my friend Jake. I know. Awkward. Things got even worse when Chelsea introduced me to her employees as her boyfriend. But then I saw Darcy standing there. Oh no. The girl I like works for Chelsea? This was bad. Really bad. Darcy looked so disappointed. Man, this sucked. For the rest of the date, I kept turning around to check on her. I even tried sending her a text to assure her it wasn't what it looked like. But this was tricky to do when Chelsea wouldn't take her eyes off of me. Do you know her? Darcy, you keep looking at her. So, is there something between you guys? I just shrugged and said, Nah, she comes into the restaurant sometimes, that's all. She must have seen right through my words, as she smirked and said, Is that so? Well, then you won't mind me firing her. Unless, of course, you continue to date me. But don't tell Jake or anyone about it. Deal?
Turns out Chelsea was even crazier than I thought. She was playing me and I didn't like it. Not one bit. But I couldn't stand by and let Darcy lose her job because of me. I knew how much it meant to her. Fine, I replied. But no kissing or anything like that. She grinned back. Whatever. You'll fall for my charm soon enough. As if. She was deluded. Like I'd ever want to kiss someone who treated me like prey. Anyway, I only had to put up with this until Darcy finished her internship, then signed her contract. Later on, I texted Darcy explaining that Chelsea was just a friend and nothing more, but she didn't seem convinced. From then on, whenever she came into the restaurant, she barely met my eye, even when I gave her an extra slice of dessert. Ouch. Worse still, I kept on bumping into Darcy when I was on dates with Chelsea. Mm. Whether it was the coffee shop, walking the street, or going into a restaurant, she always seemed to be there to spot us. And Chelsea didn't help at all as she kept on clinging on to me and acted up when she noticed Darcy was around. <sighs> Dating Chelsea was hard work. She just wouldn't quit pestering me. <sighs> it felt like every time I wasn't working, she dragged me out to some posh restaurant or the theater or something. <sighs> Yawn. When was she going to get the hint that I didn't have feelings for her? I hoped she'd figured it out soon enough as things were getting awkward between me and Jake. I hated having to lie to him. Then he messaged me saying he was feeling really down as he was pretty sure Chelsea was seeing some other dude. Aw oh man, why was I stuck in this mess? I messaged him back telling him she was probably just busy with work and not to panic. Now all I needed to do was convince Chelsea to be a one-man woman and choose Jake. On our next date, Chelsea took me to this expensive Italian, and oh my god, the food was so good. But even that didn't make up for how tedious the date was. She just sat there staring at me like she wanted to eat me or something. It made me feel so uncomfortable. Later that night, I was at home watching a movie and wondering how I could end things with Chelsea when I heard an angry thud at my door. I opened it, and to my surprise, it was Jake. He yelled out, I thought you didn't care about Chelsea. Guess you've seen me being well-treated and now you want that too? Step aside. I tried telling him I didn't want her, but this only made him madder. What, so you don't want her, just her money? How can you do that to Chelsea? She's beautiful and smart and, Jake, she made me. If I don't do this, then she's going to fire Darcy. Oh, and set her brother on us both. She's got me on a string, bro. I had no choice. I sighed and looked away to avoid his eyes. Jake's face fell as he took in this news. Then he muttered out, Oh well, I guess I knew what she was like. I felt bad for him, but what did he expect? Of course, she was only playing with him. And even he himself knew that he only had himself to blame for falling for her act. He said, Right, whatever. She needs to learn a lesson at least. We can't just let her get off with this that easily. Anyway... She could only do harm to Darcy during this internship period, right? Yep, and not anymore when Darcy signs the contract in a month. Okay then, let's play some pranks on Chelsea. We'll let her experience one glorious month of a cheater. I was kind of excited about messing with Chelsea. She certainly deserved it for ruining my chances with Darcy. Let the fun begin. So Jake asked her to go on dates when he knew she was on dates with me. Then when she made up excuses... He rang her up and sobbed out how she never wanted to spend time with him anymore. Then, another time when I was on a date with her, I went to the bathroom. Then Jake stormed into the restaurant and demanded to know what she was doing there. He made sure he left before I got back. But it was so funny walking over to the table and seeing her look all flustered. The problem was that as fun as these pranks on her were, they didn't change the fact I still had to date her. Then she told me I had to escort her to the swanky event dinner her company was having. The only exciting parts of the night were eating the food and, of course, seeing Darcy. Wow, nothing could prepare me for how stunning she looked. Unfortunately, Chelsea's brother Tim had noticed this too, and he kept on creeping around her. I saw him offer her drinks and put his arm around her. I wanted to go and drag her away from him so badly, but I had my own problems. As Chelsea led me from group to group and introduced me to them all as her boyfriend. Ugh. Finally, when Chelsea was in the bathroom, I managed to go over to Darcy. Only Tim was with her. He was kind of tipsy and was slurring out his words as he asked her to hang out with him and his friends after the event. Poor Darcy. She looked so uncomfortable. 
So I said, hey, Darcy, Chelsea wants to talk to you. It sounds pretty urgent. She's waiting for you outside. I led the way. Then when we stepped outside and it was just the two of us, I said, sorry it took me so long to save you from that creep. Are you okay? She couldn't even look me in the eye as she replied. I could look after myself. Then she went to walk back inside, so I pulled her back and said, please, Darcy, wait. It's time I told you everything. So I told her all about the mishap with the phone on our first meeting in the coffee shop. How Chelsea forced me and Jake to date her. Then how she was threatening to fire Darcy if I didn't go on dates with her. At first, Darcy rolled her eyes and muttered, yeah, right. But after I mentioned the part about her job, she seemed to believe me. She let out a long sigh. Chelsea does talk about you all the time. Now I know why. Then she said I didn't need to do this for her anymore, as she didn't intend on staying at the company anyway. It was too toxic of an environment for her, and her colleagues treated her so badly just because she was a pretty newbie. Then she said the main reason why she didn't quit the internship was because of me. Every time she came to my restaurant, I would cheer her up and make her feel much better. Okay, so this counted as her confessing her feelings for me, right? Give me one week to do what I need to do. Then I'm leaving that awful place, she told me. That sounds doable, I smiled at her. I hugged her, then we went back inside as if nothing happened. The following week was so exciting. I couldn't wait till I could finally be with Darcy. I told Jake all about it, and he decided to play one last joke on Chelsea. And there's no way I was missing this one. So I hid around the corner and watched as he turned up her doorstep and told her he couldn't be with her anymore because he couldn't stop thinking about her brother, Tim. The shock on her face was priceless. Then she started yelling at him that she didn't want him to contact her ever again and to stay away from her brother. We had such a laugh. Jake's my best friend, and I really do wish him all the best only. Hopefully now that Chelsea's out of his life, he can move on. And finally, Darcy quit her job, and now I can do what I first intended to do before this phone and crazy woman mess got in the way. And that's to take the prettiest girl I've ever seen in my life on a date. It was just such a long and messy journey to get here. But good things take time, right? Hey, Milo here. And let me tell you something about love. Well, love totally sucks. At least that's how I felt after my cheating ex Deanna broke my heart. Ouch. Deanna's 16 months and 15 days older than me. Not that I was counting or anything. I first met her in the park one morning. The heel on her shoe had broken, and being a sucker for a damsel in distress, I ran to the nearest store and bought her an emergency pair of flip-flops. She offered to take me out to lunch to say thank you. Then we hit it off. And that's how we started dating. We quickly felt madly in love despite the age difference. But then she had to go off to college. But it would just take a year being apart from each other because she'd made me promise to apply to the same school as her so we could be together. The future sounded amazing. I couldn't wait till graduation and start a new life with her in a new city. It was our 10-month anniversary. So I tried to be romantic and showed up at her place with a surprise bunch of flowers. But that's when I caught her in bed with some college guy. Talk about a bummer. I actually think I felt my heart snapped in two. I was so angry, I threw the bouquet to the ground and didn't forget to stomp on them a few times on my way out. So, I took the train home and turned into that miserable guy who hates love. To make it even worse, Valentine's Day was approaching and loved up couples were everywhere. Ugh, what a disgusting sight. If I couldn't have a happy Valentine's Day, then neither could anyone else. So I decided to mess with them. My friends were the money-making kind. So naturally, they wanted to cash in on the day of love. If your heart is still intact, then you have no idea how much it sucks feeling heartbroken and being surrounded by chocolates, flowers, and fluffy teddy bears holding hearts. But I'd already agreed to help them as I figured I could spend the extra money on a gift for Deanna. But obviously, this was pointless now. I'm not the kind of guy to bail on my friends. So, that's why I ended up in the park with a pull cart full of soppy items. Ugh. There were gooey eyes, couples everywhere. I didn't know if I wanted to vomit or scream. 
I saw a couple walking toward me, so I decided to make this more interesting. Hello, sir. Can I interest you in a beautiful bouquet of roses to show your lovely mother here how much you love her? He stared at me in confusion and clumsily said no, while the girlfriend glared at me in anger as they're walking away. She kept hitting her boyfriend's arm, asking in an annoying girly tone, Why didn't you tell him I wasn't your mom? Do I look that old? I can't believe this. You didn't even correct him. And then the guy had to calm her down in despair. <laughs> Priceless. After that, I said it to every couple that came up to me. But then one of my friends noticed that I was chasing customers away with my dumb jokes. So she kicked me off the project. Oh well, it beat being around lovesick couples. So the day after, I had no schedule and was sitting in my bedroom watching an action film that had no romance in it and minding my own business when my sister barged into my room and told me that I had to babysit the neighbor's kid so she could go on some spontaneous date with her boyfriend. Apparently, our parents decided last minute to go out of town. So seeing as my sister's still dating in secret, her and her boyfriend thought that this was the perfect timing for them to hang out. Of course, I didn't agree to babysit, but she led the little kid into my room, said to me, it's not like you have any Valentine plans anyway. Then she ran off. This little brat. Unlike my sister, I wasn't just going to abandon some little kid. So I begrudgingly took her to the mall and bought her an ice cream. When she finished that, she started whining at me that she wanted candy. Ugh, yawn. Kids are draining. Looking around at all the loved up couples, I had a eureka moment. I told her I'd buy all the candy she wanted if she went up to this one couple, hugged the guy and said, Daddy, let's go home. I miss mom. Turns out, She's a little daredevil, and she did it without question. Watching the shocked look on their faces was priceless. After a while of doing this, I bought the kid candy as promised. We sat on the bench laughing while thinking back on our achievement. <laughs> we had so much fun. Then, I spotted a girl who turned me down in middle school. She was there with some guy. I quickly told the kid to hide behind the bench and winked, Watch and learn, noob. Then I marched up to them, grabbed the guy's wrist, and yelled, So, is it because of this girl that we had to break up, you heartless swine? Then I ran off pretending to cry. I hid behind the bench with the kid. Both of us laughed our heads off and ate candy as we watched the couple fighting in confusion. After a while, I dropped the kid back home. Then I went back to mine. Through the window, I saw that my sister and her boyfriend had already been back from their date and were saying goodbye outside. So I sneaked a pic of them. I couldn't wait to blackmail her with that and demand her to pay me extra money so that our parents wouldn't know about them. I waited in the living room with a smirk on my face. But 10 minutes passed and she still hadn't appeared. I looked through the window to see them kissing for like the zillionth time already. Ugh. She clearly didn't spare a thought for her heartbroken brother. So I decided to be Cupid and grant them their wish. I raced outside with a big roll of duct tape and ran circles around them as I stuck their heads together when they were kissing. Now that is the best way to de-stress. I felt much lighter with every lap I ran. They both screamed out and tried to pull free, but they were well and truly stuck. So I left them there to untangle themselves and I whizzed off. The next morning, my sister gave me the most furious look across the table during breakfast. I swear there was fire in her eyes. But too bad she couldn't do anything to me as mom was right there. I can even see a little bruise on her forehead as a result of my prank. I had to try so hard to hold my laughter. I felt this tingling feeling between the thrill and satisfaction which made me totally forget about my failed relationship. I got such a kick out of messing with people's perfect love lives. And so I continued with my pranks on unsuspecting couples. Then, one time I walked up to a couple in the street and said to the girl, Why are you here? Didn't you say you're working overtime? Can't I trust you anymore? I'll be home waiting for your explanation. Then walked off while giggling. But this time, a hand suddenly grabbed my shoulder. Then as I turned around, the guy punched me. Then I passed out. Talk about embarrassing. I woke up dazed and confused on the sidewalk with this cute girl looking down at me. The guy had left, thank goodness. The girl seemed so relieved that I'd woken up. And she kept telling me that I must have mistaken her with someone else because she didn't know me at all. I was too embarrassed, so I had to nod in agreement. She called a taxi and helped me get home. On the ride, she apologized because her boyfriend had a short temper, and they were already arguing at that moment. She told me her name was Vanessa. Then we switched contact details so she could check up on me. 
Then, one morning at school, I noticed her in the hallway. Turns out she went to my school, but I'd never spotted her before. She saw me too and smiled and waved over at me. We started spending lunch times together. She bought me cheese fries and gave me her delicious homemade cookies. She said she wanted to make it up to me. We unintentionally grew closer, and the next thing I knew, I found myself really fond of this girl. But she's taken, and it's with a jerk. She told me all about her boyfriend. He's called Kane, and he went to a different school, thankfully. She said he was a sweet guy, but sometimes he lashed out, and one time, he even hit her. It's clear her boyfriend's a doofus, but she was too blinded by love to see it. I wanted to whisk her away and show her what being with a good guy was really like. But to be honest, I was scared of being beaten up by him again. I opened up to her about my ex and how she messed me up. Vanessa listened and never judged. I felt so at ease being around her. Then one afternoon, I saw her in the hallway after class, and it looked like she'd been crying. So I went up to her and said, Vanessa, are you okay? She forced out a smile and replied, Yeah, it's just boyfriend stuff. That's the moment when I decided that enough was enough. Scary boyfriend or not, no matter what it takes, I had to tell her my feelings and save her from him. I offered to drive her home. Then I planned to confess my feelings to her on the way home. But to my annoyance, she said it's okay as her sister was picking her up that day. Then she waved goodbye to me and ran over to a car. Wait a minute. I knew that car. Her sister, the girl in the car. That was my ex. Talk about a dilemma. How on earth did this happen? I swore to never see my ex again. I couldn't bear the thought of breathing the same air as her, but now I had a crush on her sister. Help! To make it even worse, I've told Vanessa all about how much I hate my ex. How can I let her know that the ex in question turned out to be her sister? Ugh, help me. This is so crazy and I have no idea how to wriggle my way out of this one. Hey guys, it's me, Milo. I'm back again to share the next part of my story with you. Firstly, here's a quick recap. So my ex Deanna cheated on me with some college doofus and in doing so broke my heart. So I decided that if I couldn't be happy, then neither could anyone else. So around Valentine's Day, I messed with other couples. One such prank led me to meet Vanessa. Then I found myself falling for her. The problem is she has a boyfriend and he's a jerk. And the even bigger problem is that I just found out that she's my ex's little sister. And there's a chance I may have told Vanessa some pretty harsh truths about her sister. But in my defense back then, I didn't realize they were siblings. At first, I had no idea how to deal with the situation. So I just decided to avoid everyone. If I saw Vanessa at school, then I darted around the corner into the restroom behind an overweight kid. You know, anything that meant I didn't have to face her. The problem was I found myself missing her too much. I felt like I couldn't live without her. So no matter the consequences, I had to do something now. So I walked up to her at lunch and told her I'd been avoiding her because I couldn't cope with seeing her so upset over her boyfriend that didn't deserve her and it was wrong of him to hit her and she should get out now while she still could. Then I told her I'd always be there for her and hopefully as more than just friends. She seemed touched. She knew there were a lot of problems in their relationship too but admitted she'd been in denial about it all. She held my hand and said that she had feelings for me too but now we had to deal with her boyfriend first. Ugh, her boyfriend Kane. He was the short-tempered kind of guy who solves everything with a punch. He will never accept it if she breaks up with him. It would dent his pride too much and probably result in him being violent toward her. While to be honest, I'm too much of a coward. I couldn't protect her in that case. If he knew she was breaking up with him to be with me, well, then that's the end for me. So I thought long and hard about this and then voila. I derived a master plan. If he couldn't handle Vanessa breaking up with him, then we'll make him break up with her. <laughs> wow, <laughs> am I a genius or what? The next day I told Vanessa the plan. It's simple. She just needs to intentionally look sloppy, stinky, and ugly in front of him so he would soon tire of her. When she first heard it, she wasn't impressed and said, that's so embarrassing, I can't do that. No girl wants to look like a mess. I told her that she would only have to do it in front of him. Besides, he went to a different school to us, so she could still look like her usual pretty self in class. Eventually, she agreed to do it. And as I expected, just after a few weeks of playing ugly, Kane had enough and broke up with her. Vanessa came around to mine and excitedly told me the news. She'd gone to Kane's place without any makeup on, wearing some stained oversized shirt, her hair a mess, 
and she hadn't even brushed her teeth. Then, when he ended it with her, she pretended to cry. <laughs> I couldn't believe this good girl could act pretty well, too. Then, seizing the occasion, I asked her to be my girlfriend, and she, of course, said yes. Then we kissed, and, well, <laughs> talk about amazing. She was such a better kisser than her sister. We kept our relationship low-key at first. This worked for her as she didn't want to rub our relationship in Kane's face. And it worked for me as I didn't want Deanna to find out. Then, after a month of dating, she dropped the bomb. I want you to meet my sister. She's in college and lives in another city, but she's currently home for vacation. I should officially introduce you to her first, since we don't know when she will leave again. I could have screamed out, but instead, I kept my cool and asked to see a picture of her. Then, on seeing one, I feigned being shocked and said that this girl always picked on me during middle school, and I was still traumatized from it. That those were the darkest years of my life. I mean, I didn't actually know Deanna back in middle school, probably because she was a year older than me, but Vanessa didn't need to know this. Vanessa felt bad for me and said she didn't know that there was that side to her sister. She said it was true that Deanna was pretty cranky in middle school, but thought that that was just puberty. She never realized she was actually a mean girl, especially not to a younger kid. By this point, I might as well have been cast in some soap opera as my performance was a class act. I must have looked so pathetic that she told me it's okay, and she'd not mention Deanna anymore until I felt comfortable about it. This solved my ex problem, for now, but it didn't solve the Kane problem, as he found out about Vanessa and me, and he wasn't happy. My guess is Kane must have stalked Vanessa and spotted us together. Then he followed me home, as that crazy dude showed up on my doorstep and yelled at me to stay away from her. Well, I couldn't blame him. No one on earth ever likes their ex's new partner. Not only did this crazy guy know where I lived, but now my sister Kayla also knew about my relationship with Vanessa. Since she's still bitter about the Valentine prank I pulled on her, recap, it involved her, her boyfriend, and a whole lot of duct tape. So it wasn't overly surprising when she smirked at me and said, just you wait and see. I haven't forgot about what you did to me on Valentine's, and now seems like the perfect time for revenge. <laughs> I repeated her words in a mocking tone to annoy her, but to be honest, deep down in my gut, I did feel on the anxious side. She's just as crazy of a prankster as I am. Now, I always had to be on guard. After that, my sister and Kane seemed to take turns to ruin our dates. Jeez, didn't they have anything better to do? One time, I was kissing Vanessa out in the yard. Suddenly, there was water pouring down from nowhere. We were completely soaked. I looked around and saw my sister standing on the second floor balcony holding an empty bucket and said, oops, I was just trying to water the flowers. Then on a movie date night, Kane showed up at the same film, sat in the row behind us, and kept on kicking the back of my seat and even threw popcorn at me. Later when I went home and checked the hood of my hoodie, there were all kinds of trash and enough popcorn for the next movie date. How childish. It was all trivial stuff really, but it was getting annoying. Then on our two month anniversary, I told Vanessa to dress up all nice, then I took her to the swanky Italian restaurant. The meal was amazing, until when I reached into my pocket and took out my wallet to pay. Then, to my horror, a picture of a bikini-wearing girl fell out of nowhere. I was so shocked and just froze in confusion. Vanessa looked so upset. I explained that I'd never seen that picture before in my life, and I had no idea who the girl was. Then the waiter showed up with the card machine. I clumsily opened my wallet, but none of my cards were there. I searched my pockets again in panic, but nothing, not even a penny. Bright red, I muttered out that I had no money on me. This was the worst moment of my life. I thought I was going to lose my girlfriend and have to pot wash. But then I heard arguing coming from outside. Me, Vanessa, and the waiter all stared out the window and saw my sister and Kane yelling at each other. We stepped outside and listened in on their conversation. Turns out my sister had taken all the cards out of my wallet so I wouldn't be able to pay. She's been peeking in from the window all night long and spying on us, just to wait and see my pathetic face as I found out that all of my cards have vanished into thin air. But then she was disappointed that it didn't go to plan because I was busy explaining to Vanessa about some stupid photo instead. That's when she met eyes with some crazy guy who was standing next to her and laughing his ass off in satisfaction, which you can already tell who he was, the mastermind of that bikini photo prank. Kayla got annoyed and picked a fight with Kane because now she felt like her prank had been overlooked and she wasn't happy about it. It's kind of dumb, really. As if they weren't so proud and headstrong, 
They could have watched me miserably try to squirm my way out of the no cards and picture of another girl fiasco. Instead, they'd been caught red-handed setting me up. Vanessa pointed at Kane and said to the waiter, he'll pay for our meal. Then she grabbed my arm and pulled me away. So yeah, we left my sister and Kane to their arguing, and I took Vanessa home. Then, a few days later, Kane sent me a message. It's amazing what delving into your past can bring up. I know all about you and Deanna. Set me up on a date with your sister or else I'll tell Vanessa everything. Dang it. Who would have thought after that stupid incident that crazy Kane guy would catch feelings for my evil little sister? In hot sweats, I replied that my sister already had a boyfriend. Unsurprisingly, Kane didn't care about this factor. He told me a time and a place and said my sister better be there else he wouldn't just tell Vanessa about Deanna. He'd also 100% ruin my life. OMG, what am I supposed to do now? Do I really have to set up a date for my little sister with a crazy guy like Kane? Oh well, she's not really sane either, but she's still my sister. But if I don't agree to help him, then who knows what could happen to me tomorrow? I mean, I don't want Vanessa to find out about Diana, And I also don't... Hey guys, Milo here, again. I'm going to share with you the final part of my awesome story, and trust me, you won't want to miss it. For those of you who are struggling to keep up, in the second part, I decided to make a move with Vanessa, despite knowing that she's the little sister of my horrible ex. And also, she was dating this thug, Kane. The only thing that matters is that she had feelings for me too. So I convinced Vanessa to dress sloppily so Kane would end it with her. Of course, my genius plan worked. Then we started dating officially. But I didn't want Vanessa to find out the truth about my past relationship with her sister. So I made up some ridiculous story to her about how I wasn't ready to face seeing her beloved sis yet, as she was the mean girl that had made my life a living hell back in middle school. Anyway, Kane found out about Deanna being my ex. And now he's threatening to tell Vanessa everything unless I set him up on a date with my sister Kayla. I know, complicated, huh? I swear my life is just one big soap opera. Anyway, tuck luff, sis. Seems like you have a date with Creepy Kane this Saturday. Okay, so the fact she already has a boyfriend makes things somewhat complicated. I guess there was only one thing for it. I just have to trick her into going on the date. So, Kayla loves singing. I mean, she's tone deaf, but she thinks she's Katy Perry or something. So I figured that the most logical way to trick her into meeting Kane was to come up with some story about a talent agent being interested in her. I told her that I had a friend who had a friend who knew a talent agent, and this agent would just love to have dinner with her on Saturday and talk about her career. At first, she raised her eyebrow and said, as if. So I let out a long sigh, then replied, as much as it pains me to admit that you have talent, well, you do, so meet the agent or don't, as if I care. I shrugged, then I walked off. I hadn't got far when she shouted after me, Yeah, okay, I'll be there. Result. I knew that my sister wouldn't be able to resist the prospect of getting one up on me. It's a shame for her that this would never happen. Of course, I wasn't a complete jerk. Kane's a volatile idiot. So the least I could do was secretly follow her to make sure she was safe. I sat in the restaurant in my sunglasses, stick-on mustache and baseball cap. Talk about the master of disguise. I should open up a spy business. Kayla was far too busy droning on about herself to notice me. She didn't seem to recognize Kane as being Vanessa's ex either. Probably because he'd actually washed his hair. And was that aftershave I could smell? I overheard her say to him, So do you really think I can make it as a singer? Kane looked confused, but he just shrugged and said, Um, yeah, sure. Even though she wouldn't quit going on about her singing, he still continued to flirt with her. Blame things like he told her she looked pretty and stroked her arm. Ugh. At one point, Kayla started singing. Kane looked dumbfounded, and the waiter walking past actually covered his ears. It was so funny, even I couldn't help but laugh out loud. Then she must have had a light bulb moment about who he was, as she gave him a scrutinizing look, stood up, then said, Wait a minute, um, yeah, excuse me? I, I need the bathroom. As she stormed across the room, I knew she was bailing. Oh no, if she did that, then Kane would tell Vanessa everything and my life would be over. 
So I hurried after her and shouted her name. At first, she gave me a weird look, so I removed my sunglasses and fake mustache. She looked pretty mad. But I knew that I had to tell her all about how Cain was blackmailing me. I even managed to fake some tears. At first, she seemed furious and she shouted at me. A lot. But then she seemed to calm down and she smirked. Uh-oh. That smirk. Didn't look good. She told me, Okay, I'll go back inside. But this means you have to do everything I say. All. Month. I didn't like the sound of this, but I had little choice. So I agreed. She went back inside and the date seemed to go well. The problem was now I didn't have to worry about Cain. Instead, I had to worry about my sister. Why do these situations happen to me? Has karma for messing with all those couples come back to bite me? I had to do all Kayla's chores, including staying home every weekend to babysit the kid next door. <clears throat> then I also had to message her actual boyfriend and apologize for the Valentine's prank I played on him. A reminder for you, it involved my super speed and a whole lot of duct tape. Things got weirder, though, as Kane seemed totally smitten with my sister. He sent her flowers, then he sent her a giant teddy bear. And he even messaged me saying he wanted to assure me he would never hurt her. Okay, this was weird. It seems my sister had made the once thug-like Kane turn soft. Thing is, she binned his flowers, gave the teddy to the neighbor's kid, and, well, made it clear she didn't like him. Wow. Love can really mess someone up. Even someone like Cain. I guess he liked her coldness toward him. I suppose it's far more of a challenge than being with someone all kind and sweet like Vanessa. Kayla had started selling home-baked goods. You know, cookies and things. They were tough, burned, and gross, but people seemed to buy them. So guess who she roped into playing delivery driver? Urgh, talk about lame. What made it even worse was I had a date with Vanessa one day. But no, now I had to deliver inedible biscuits. Being the smart guy I am, I found a way to get around this. So I picked Vanessa up from the library, then went off to make the deliveries. The plan was to drop them off as quickly as possible, then Vanessa and I could have date night. Vanessa didn't mind. In fact, she thought it was sweet that I was helping Kayla out. <laughs> ha! We got to the delivery address, and it was a nail salon. I left Vanessa in the car and rushed inside. Then I saw who the customer was, and oh my god. There standing in front of me was Deanna. Talk about a shocker. I was so surprised that I actually dropped the delivery. I muttered out something about how my sister would reimburse her. Then I went to leave. She grabbed my arm and said she wanted to apologize to me properly for cheating on me. Now was not the time for this. Talk about awkward. I tried to yank my arm away, but she kept clinging to me. Then Vanessa suddenly walked in. I guess she must have seen us through the shop window. She yelled out, Deanna, what are you doing? Let him go. Stop being so mean. I didn't want to believe that you ever teased him back in middle school, but here's the proof. Deanna looked confused as she replied, What are you doing here? And what do you mean tease? They yelled back and forth in confusion for a while until Deanna blurted out, He's my ex-boyfriend. Cue two furious women staring at me in anger, asking for an explanation. Now would be the perfect time for a UFO to come and abduct me, but no such luck. I had some explaining to do, so we went to the coffee shop next door, and I confessed that Deanna was actually my ex. But I only found out about it after dating Vanessa. So I lied because I didn't know how to handle that awkward situation. I begged them for forgiveness. I was so scared. I was basically staring down at the table the whole time. But then suddenly, I heard giggles. Deanna started to laugh and said, That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Oh my, Milo. Vanessa joined in. Okay, that makes sense since he's the one who also came up with the ridiculous plan for me to break up with my ex by playing ugly. He really has a unique sense of solving problems. Okay, so I never thought they'd find any of this funny, but at least they're not mad at me. So in the end, I got a proper apology from Deanna. We're cool now, and I can freely date Vanessa too. Turns out life is far simpler when you don't end up in a web of lies. As for Kane, well, he doesn't bother Vanessa anymore. Instead, he's still pining after my sister. I actually think he might have a chance with her, as she broke up with her boyfriend because that dude 
has been constantly bailing on her to hang out with his friends. Even though I've seen a different side to Kane, I don't know how I'd feel about having him as my actual brother-in-law one day. <laughs> but yeah, I got the girl, so everything turned out pretty great. As for pranks, well, I can't rule out never doing the odd one or two in the future, but I promise to never mess with loved-up couples again. I've learned my lesson on that one. Hi, I'm Diane, and I'm 20 years old. I fell in love on the first day of college. I'm not even joking. I'd promised my mom I'd focus on my studies and wouldn't fall for any boys. But one look at Brett, and I broke that promise immediately. We had an instant connection, and pretty soon we were spending every waking moment together. I can't help but think that if I hadn't met him... Maybe I'd never have found out the dark secret my mom and aunt had been hiding from me my whole life. You see, my mom raised me alone, and I had no idea who my dad was. Let's just say it seemed like my mom got around, so she really didn't want me to get into the same kind of situation as her. I decided to keep Brett a secret. She didn't need to know, right? When I went home for Christmas vacation, I missed Brett so much, but I couldn't let my mom know about him. So I'd wait until she went to bed before calling him. One night, she caught me, though. She must have gone to the bathroom, and suddenly I heard footsteps. She was standing right there. I didn't know how much she heard, but I was so embarrassed. I thought she'd grab the phone from me and tell me off. But instead, she just walked back to bed. It was so weird. In the morning, she was sitting at the kitchen table, grinning, and said, Well, who is he then? Invite him over. Don't be shy. I couldn't believe it. I thought she'd freak out, but instead she wanted to meet him. She suggested we invited him over for dinner, as my aunt was also coming over that night. My mom and my aunt were like best friends and had basically raised me together, so I was excited for her to meet Brett too. He took the bus that afternoon, as he was desperate to see me, and my mom said he could stay in the spare room. As soon as my mom saw Brett, she grinned at me and whispered how handsome he was. Then we sat down to dinner and started chatting. My mom had so many questions for him, and it was a bit awkward. She wouldn't shut up, and it made her seem so nosy. She asked where he'd grown up, and what his mom and dad did, and even asked for their names and stuff. Meanwhile, my aunt just sat there quietly, and then at one point she got up from the table and went out into the garden. My mom ran after her and Brett looked at me worried. I had no idea what was wrong. Ten minutes later, my mom came in and her expression had totally changed. She went from being warm and friendly to totally strict and cold. She looked at both Brett and I and said she decided I was far too young to have a boyfriend staying over, and then asked Brett to leave. I couldn't believe it. I mean, I was 20 years old. She was being so rude. So I said to her, Mom, why? Please can he just stay? I was almost begging her, but she looked so serious and firm, and I knew she wasn't going to change her mind. Brett was even more shocked than me. I mean, it had been my mom who'd invited him in the first place, and now there she was, shooing him away. He quickly grabbed his stuff and ordered a taxi. I was so upset I didn't even say bye to him. I just burst into tears and felt so angry at my mom. Right after Brett left, I ran upstairs and locked myself in my room and my mom stood on the other side begging to speak to me. She said there was something she needed to tell me. I refused to come out and instead sat on the floor on the other side of the door. I could hear my mom crying and knew this was serious. She said the reason she didn't want Brett to stay was because he was actually my half-brother. No, I didn't understand. I asked if my dad was also Brett's dad, and then I got angry. I thought my mom hadn't known who my dad was. I opened the door and I was about to start shouting at her when she told me what was really going on. I'd been adopted. Well, actually, I'd been kidnapped by my aunt when I was born. It's a long, shocking story, but basically my biological parents were this rich couple, but they were struggling to get pregnant. My biological mom had a best friend called Ashley, who she told everything to, but Ashley secretly had a crush on my dad. She seduced my dad until one night they slept together, and Ashley ended up getting pregnant. 
My dad was so happy and promised Ashley he'd help raise the baby, but that he couldn't divorce my mom. This made Ashley angry. She wanted my dad all to herself and wanted their kid to become the heir to his company. At the same time, my biological mom fell pregnant with me, and when my dad found out, he quickly forgot about Ashley and tried to forget about the mistake he'd made that one night. This, of course, made Ashley even more angry, but she still pretended to be friends with my mom. When my mom went into labor with me, my dad was away on a business trip, and Ashley paid someone to sneak into the hospital and kidnap me. That person turned out to be my aunt. She did it because she was desperate for cash, so she snuck in, dressed up as a nurse, and in the middle of the night stole me away. But she wasn't cold-blooded enough to just throw me away or leave me at an orphanage. So she took me to her sister's place and told her that she'd found me abandoned on the street. Her sister, who had never wanted to get married but had always wanted to be a mom, was so happy and decided to raise me. But then a few days later, it was all over the news, a missing baby. There was an exact description of what I'd been wearing, and even a photo of me just after I'd been born. There was no denying that I was the missing baby. My new mom confronted my aunt about it and found out the truth. My aunt said there was no way they could return me as my aunt had already spent all the money she'd been paid to cover some debts. And she didn't want to go to prison, so they decided to raise me as if I really was their own. That secret would still have been hidden from me if I hadn't brought Brett home. My mom was so shocked that I'd brought my dad and Ashley's son into her home and introduced him to her as my boyfriend. As my mom told me all of this, I just sat there frozen. This was absolutely unbelievable. I felt sick. They'd lied to me all these years, and even worse, my boyfriend was actually my half-brother. My whole life was one big mess. I hate you, mom, and I hate you too, I said to my aunt. You helped that evil monster Ashley get what she wanted, and now you've ruined my life and taken away my family. My mom reached out to hug me, but I didn't want her near me. We both just sat there crying. She tried to calm me down and get me to relax. Then she sighed and said, I'm sorry. I'm truly sorry. Your whole life, I've been trying to make it up to you. I thought my love for you would be enough. As for Ashley, well, I heard she didn't get what she wanted in the end. Wait, why? I don't understand. But she successfully kidnapped me, right? I wiped my tears and looked at her. Yes, sweetie, but her main goal was to become your dad's wife. But that obviously didn't happen. Then she continued. After my aunt had kidnapped me, Ashley had given birth to Brett and was so happy thinking that my parents no longer had a baby and that my dad would now leave my mom and go live with her. But that's not what happened. Yes, their dear daughter was taken away, but my dad still stayed with my mom and loved her even more. My dad didn't get together with Ashley, but apparently my dad had still been helping raise Brett until now. There's definitely no bad blood between them because I've heard Brett talk about his dad quite a lot. Now there was only one thing for it. I had to find my biological parents and find out the rest of the story. They deserved to know I was alive. But now, what would I do about Brett? I'd have to break up with him somehow. Hi, it's me, Diane again. In the first part of my story, I've told you about how I found out my boyfriend Brett was actually my half-brother when I once brought him home to introduce him to my mom, who also wasn't even my real mom. I was seriously upset with my mom and my aunt. I loved them both so much, but they've been lying to me my whole life. Imagine how hurt I must have been. Now with the fact that my dad was also Brett's dad, of course it was wrong to keep dating him. So, one day we met on our college campus, and I told him I wanted to break up with him. It was so horrible to break his heart like that, but the truth would be much, much worse. Part of me really wanted to tell him because then I could meet my real parents, but then Brett would really suffer. Obviously, Brett didn't take the breakup well. 
He called me so many times and even came to my house begging to get me back. Even though he knew my mom didn't want him there, I completely avoided him, as I felt like if I saw him, I'd just want to be with him again. I ended up taking a semester off college to sort my head out. It wasn't just to avoid Brett, though. I had another reason, too. I noticed that my biological parents' company was hiring a finance intern. I discovered this when I was Googling them one day, and I realized I had to apply. Well, I got the job. I was so nervous to meet my parents, and on my very first day, my manager introduced me to my dad. I had to try and act as normal as possible, just like any other employee, but inside I was screaming, wishing that I could just tell him who I really was. A few days later, I finally met my mom. My colleague told me that sometimes she would come and bring her husband lunch, and as soon as I saw her, I started shaking. She handed my dad his lunch and gave him a peck on the cheek, and they looked so sweet together. I couldn't stop staring at her, and as she left, she glanced at me and smiled. Suddenly, I felt so emotional, as if I'd lost something that I'd never had. I ended up running to the bathroom and crying in secret. It was just so overwhelming. When my birthday rolled around, my colleagues organized a small birthday party for me at the office. My mom and dad joined us to congratulate me and even sang happy birthday to me. I kept looking at my mom and noticed there were tears in her eyes. I knew that was because my birthday was the same date that she lost me, her only child. If only she knew I was standing there right in front of her. That night when I got home, I saw that my mom and aunt had also prepared a surprise birthday for me. It made me even more emotional because I thought back over all the years. It didn't matter how busy they both were. They always threw me a party. Inside, I felt like I was going crazy. I felt so torn between emotions for both my biological and adoptive family. I don't know why, but I decided that was the right moment to tell my mom and aunt about my decision to meet my real parents. Don't worry. I'll never leave both of you. And aunt, I'll never tell them you were the kidnapper, I said. After that, both my mom and aunt were crying and thanked me for promising not to leave them and even offered to help me get my parents back, which just made me cry too. You're probably wondering about Brett. Well, one day I was in the elevator and all of a sudden the doors opened and Brett was standing right there with my dad. I wanted to run away, but I had to face him. I quickly said, oh, hey, long time no see, Brett. I work here now. Um, what are you doing here? My dad looked at us confused, and I pretended not to know that the two of them were father and son. So he explained, Diane, this is my dad. You must have known him from working together. Dad, this is my, um, ex-girlfriend Diane. I've mentioned her to you, he said. Then my dad complimented me and said I was a great girl at work and that he was sorry it hadn't worked out for us. Brett looked at me sadly then. I told him I had work to do and rushed off. You see, I was solely focused on revealing myself to my parents and didn't want anything to distract me, but it was going to be tough now that my dad knew I was Brett's ex. But thankfully, my aunt had found out something about Ashley that I could use. That night... My aunt came to my room and told me that she'd been researching Ashley. She was afraid that Ashley would start bothering me if she found out I was trying to get back to my family. Turns out my aunt was friends with a close friend of Ashley, the same friend who helped Ashley hire my aunt to kidnap me. So my aunt met up with her to ask about Ashley, and she told my aunt that Ashley was married and had a daughter. As for her son, Brett... Ever since he was a child, she'd just given him to his dad's family, a.k.a. my parents. So, then my aunt went to Ashley's house. She spotted her going somewhere with some friends and followed her. She overheard Ashley bragging about her daughter, and then her one friend said, Oh, Ashley, you're so lucky to have two amazing kids. But Ashley just laughed and said, Oh, Brett, that boy is so stubborn. He's not like me at all. He must get his personality from his dad, whoever his dad might be. <laughs> to be honest, till this day, I still don't know and don't even bother to know. My aunt couldn't believe what she was hearing, so she asked her friend about it, and then, yes, another shocking truth came out. My dad wasn't even Brett's dad. 
Back then, Ashley had slept with a few random men to try and get pregnant. Then she tricked my dad into thinking the baby was his, so he'd take responsibility and divorce his wife. However, that didn't work out. But still, she kept the lie going and handed Brett over to my parents, just so Brett could inherit my parents' company. OMG! Ashley was such a monster. She had fooled so many people. All I wanted was to expose her, but my aunt said we didn't have valid evidence yet. So I told my aunt I'd find a way to get some DNA samples from Brett and my dad. Firstly, I asked Brett to meet at a cafe, and apologized for my ghosting behavior. I hoped he'd understand and we could be on good terms. To my complete surprise, he confessed that he was still in love with me. In my mind, I thought, I still love you too. I just wished this all would be over soon and we could get back together. As we were saying goodbye, we hugged, and I quickly grabbed a hair that had fallen on his shoulder. With my dad, I managed to find some of his facial hair on his razor in the bathroom by his office. But as I walked out, I saw there was a kid's drawing on his wall that was signed by Brett. It was nothing special, but it really made me feel bad. Clearly, my dad loved Brett so much and was so proud of him. I didn't want to ruin this for them. And sure enough, the DNA results were as expected. Brett was not my dad's son. But I was so hesitant to expose the truth. I worried that my parents' feelings for Brett would change. If they knew that I were their daughter and Brett wasn't actually related to them by blood, maybe they'd just abandon him. And with me and Brett's relationship, they might never accept it. So, in the end, we might all lose someone we love. A son to them, a lover to me, and a family to Brett. If I kept everything hidden... Maybe Brett and I could get back together, and I could just see my parents that way. That would be so much better for everyone, right? And it was. Brett ended up joining the company, too, and I could tell he wanted to get back together. So, everything was going according to plan. But one day, Brett, my dad, and I were having lunch together, and Ashley stormed in. Right in front of us, she started yelling at my dad, saying that he was mistreating Brett by only giving him an intern's job. Brett quickly jumped up and explained that it was his own choice, but Ashley was furious. She shamelessly asked my dad to give her and her new family more money, including school fees for her daughter. She was basically blackmailing my dad. She said that because in the past she'd handed over her son to my parents out of pity, that they'd lost their child, aka me, so she thought it was okay to demand more money from him. My dad didn't reply to her, and Brett was so angry and embarrassed by his mom's behavior, he told her to stop and basically dragged her out of there. I was almost as angry as Brett. How could Ashley do this? I quickly excused myself and left my dad there all alone. By a twist of fate, I bumped into Ashley again. After work, I went to buy some sunscreen, and when it was my turn to pay, I felt someone push me from behind. Then the person said, I'm in a rush, let me go first, I've got my money ready. And yeah, it was none other than Ashley. And the money she was holding was probably the money from my dad. Clearly, it wasn't for her daughter's school fees then. She didn't recognize me, and didn't even realize she made me drop my purse. But just before I grabbed it, she got there first. And of course there was a photo inside of me, my mom, and my aunt from when I was just a baby. As soon as she picked it up, her face changed. She seemed to realize my aunt and suddenly realized who I was. Oh my god, I never expected that I'd have to confront Ashley in this way. Would she do something bad to me now? Hi, it's me again, Diane. In part two of my story, I started to work in my parents' company, but I didn't have the courage to tell them the truth that I was their long-lost daughter. Fortunately, one day, I found out that Brett, my boyfriend, wasn't my half-brother, and that his mom, Ashley, had been lying this whole time. But I didn't want to unveil the truth, because I didn't want Brett to get hurt. That was until the day I bumped into Ashley. In the store, I watched as she looked at the photo of me and my mom and aunt from when I was just a baby, and the look of recognition on her face as she realized my aunt was the kidnapper she hired nearly 20 years ago, she looked at me terrified. Are, are, are you that baby? Are, are you also the one I saw in the company earlier this afternoon? What are you doing with Brett and his dad there? Did you, did you know everything? She shot questions at me and didn't even wait for my response. Instead, she just started yelling at me, 
claiming that I was plotting to get revenge on her for stealing my life away from me. I knew it was pointless trying to explain to her, so I said nothing and watched as she ran out of the store without buying anything. The next day when I got to the company, I found out that Brett had suddenly disappeared. He hadn't come to work and no one could get in touch with him. My dad told me that he'd gone to see his mom the night before, and after that he hadn't come home. Oh my god, his mom! After he'd bump into me, had she done something bad to him? I couldn't bear it. My aunt had given me Ashley's address, so I went there to find out what was going on. As soon as she opened the door, I asked her where Brett was, and she just smirked at me and said she told him I was his half-sister and that I was preparing to kick him out of my dad's family. So she said he must have run away because he was so disgusted by me. I felt so angry I wanted to scream. Ashley was ruining everything. She even said to me, You can't fool me. It's no coincidence that you're working in your dad's company and that you've seduced Brett. You're doing all of this on purpose. Well, that just made me even angrier. I said to her, I know Brett isn't my dad's son. I did a DNA test, and you're lucky I haven't said anything to either of them. But I will now. You better prepare yourself for the consequences. Then I left, leaving her standing there looking angry. I went straight to my parents' house to tell them before Ashley could beat me there to tell them lies. They let me in straight away and asked me what was going on and if it was about Brett. I nodded and took out all the evidence I'd prepared. This was the moment of truth. I was so nervous. I gave them the DNA results of Brett and my dad, then the baby photo of me, and then a letter my aunt had written confessing about how Ashley had hired her to kidnap me. My parents were shocked, of course, and had a lot of questions, but soon it all became clear and we all started crying. It was just so overwhelming. I even told them about what Ashley had told Brett the night before and begged them to believe me that I didn't do it all on purpose. Of course they said they believed me, and I was relieved. But the very next day, you won't believe what Ashley told them. My parents went straight to Ashley's the next day to confront her, and she couldn't deny it because there was so much evidence. But then she told my parents that she had been feeling so guilty, so she was the one who'd gotten in touch with my aunt and encouraged her to tell me the truth and then help me find my parents. After my parents told me this, I told them Ashley was lying. She was trying to make herself look like an angel when she was none other than the devil. I suggested to my parents we sue her or something, and then a few days later Ashley got in touch with me. She'd found out where I lived, and as soon as I let her in, she begged me not to sue her. She'd obviously already received a warning letter from my parents' lawyer. She said she had a family to care for and didn't want them to know about her past. Then she promised me she'd never come near me or my family again. I was sick of her now and asked her to leave. But then she apologized again and she really regretted everything she told Brett and that she'd gone to see him. What? Where did you find him? I asked. And she told me that she found him at her parents' house, where she and Brett had lived when he was little before she'd gotten married. Oh, that's right. I knew Brett loved his grandparents so much and often visited them. I hadn't even thought that that was where he could be. Then she told me that Brett hadn't disappeared because he was disgusted by me. It was because he felt so guilty about everything that had happened. She told me she'd already gone to see him and confessed because she wanted to at least be seen as an honest mother in her son's eyes. After I told Brett that he isn't your dad's son, he got so angry and shouted at me that he hated me and never wanted to see me again. It crushed me. Ashley told me and started to cry. Please forgive me, Diane, she continued. I've lost Brett. Surely that's punishment enough for everything I've done? I thought that what I did would help Brett so he could grow up in a wealthy family. But turns out all I did was hurt the people around me, especially Brett. Can you guess what I did next? I went to meet my parents and asked them to remove all accusations against Ashley. You're probably wondering why I changed my tune so quickly. Well, I felt like enough revenge had already happened, and I couldn't bear anyone suffering anymore. All I'd ever wanted was to have a peaceful life, and revenge only satisfies us for a second. It doesn't make us happy in the long term. After that, Ashley came to apologize to my parents, and swore she'd completely disappear from our life after that. Then she gave us Brett's grandparents' address, 
and asked us not to put any blame on Brett. Then she left. Poor Brett. When I went to meet him, it was clear he was the one who'd been hurt most by all of this. His grandparents told me that after Ashley had revealed the truth to him, he'd lock himself up in his room and hadn't come out. I knocked on his door and begged him to let me in. After a while, he opened the door, and I couldn't believe how he looked. He'd become so skinny, and his eyes were so sad. It made me so upset to see him like this. He said to me that he blamed himself for everything. For the big lie my life had been, for my parents' loss of their only child, and for the way we'd broken up. He truly believed all of this was because of him and his mom. I hugged him and told him none of this was his fault, and I asked him to come back to my parents' house because we all missed him so much. He eventually agreed, but I could see he was nervous, especially when both my parents knew that Brett wasn't related to them by blood. But my parents welcomed him back into the house. However, I could see they were feeling a bit awkward about what to say, so I stood up and said to them, even though you guys aren't actually related, you've still been so happy together. Just like my adoptive mom, she ended up getting a daughter she might never have had, and you got a son that brought you so much joy. Sure, there were lots of lies, but we were still happy, right? Believe it or not, everything worked out after that. Brett and I went back to school, and we've both decided to go work at my parents' company after graduation. I have chosen to move in with my parents, but of course, I still visit my adoptive mom and aunt all the time. My adoptive mom understands that this is important for me, so that I can get to know my parents properly and catch up on lost time. Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you. I asked my parents to forgive my adoptive mom and aunt, because even though they acted wrongly in the past, they still raised me and did such an amazing job. As for Brett, he moved out into his own place, but still visits my parents all the time. However, Brett and I are no longer dating. It wasn't because of my parents, though. Let's be honest, it would just be too weird if we kept dating after everything we'd been through. It was a hard decision for us both, but it's for the best. We both need to move on so that we can have a better future. And hey, at least we can still be friends, and soon, colleagues too. Hey, I'm Saskia, and I'm a college student. I live with my roomie, Ellie. She's fun at times, but other times, she can be super serious. Also, more often than not, it feels like she's completely attached to her annoying boyfriend, Brett, as I'm always walking in on them kissing. So gross. But thanks to them, I got the chance to be around my crush. Then I myself somehow ruined it. I love rom-coms. Like, really love them. So naturally, when this amazing-looking rom-com hit the cinemas, I wanted to see it on its release date. At first, Ellie agreed to go and see it with me, but then the day before, she cancelled on me. This made me mad, as she'd promised me. So, I trailed after her around our house and kept on nagging her about it while she was trying to cook, study, and talk on the phone to Brett. All of my nagging paid off, as she eventually caved and agreed to come, but only on the condition that Brett came to. This sucked, as I didn't like him to be there at all. Besides, I didn't want to play gooseberry to these two. I mean, talk about awkward. I moaned at her for ruining our girls' night and told her she was a lame friend. Then she suggested that Brett's friend Trent could come too. Trent would go. He's my pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. I mean, cuteness level? 10 out of 10. I have already seen him a couple of times at school and secretly admired him, though she didn't know about it. I was so excited about meeting Trent properly, so I spent ages doing my hair and makeup, and I put on this really cute dress. Probably that was the longest duration I spent in front of the mirror in my entire life. I wanted to impress him. Then maybe he could become my boyfriend, and I'd have my very own happy ending. Ellie and I showed up at the theater before them. Time ticked by, and I remained glued to the entrance. When it comes to plans, I'm always the punctual one. I hate it when someone's late. I mean, it's not hard to be on time. Jeez, they were almost half an hour late. What's wrong with them? I was mad. Super mad. Anger built up inside of me. I'm surprised steam didn't come out of my ears. But then, suddenly, Brett and Trent walked through the entrance. And just a second, 
all my anger vanished. Trent was wearing a navy shirt, my fave color, and looking so damn hot. My anger instantly melted, and I found myself smiling over at him. He said, Sorry we're late. It's the traffic. And when we were coming... Before he could complete, I blurted out, It's okay. Ellie gave me a strange look and was about to say something, but I hit her arm to stop her. She knew how much lateness bugged me. The boys mentioned they were hungry, so we went to get food. I was so hungry, my stomach was gurgling, but I didn't want to look greedy in front of him. The two lovebirds walked holding hands in front, leaving us behind. We walked in silence. I wanted to talk and not miss a chance to stare at his face, but as I didn't want to appear desperate, I chose to keep quiet. Just then, my stomach gurgled really loudly, but he acted like he hadn't heard. He was so sweet. Everyone else ordered puffs. But have you tried eating those without spreading them all over your lip? I was trying to impress Trent, not scare him off. So, to stay on the safe side, I ordered the potato baji, and I only ate two, although I'm a big foodie. During the movie, Ellie and Brett occupied the corner seats, so I sat next to Mr. Cutie. The movie started, and they got into action. I was not eavesdropping, but I couldn't help but hear some weird noises coming from them. Trent smiled at me. I guess he heard them too. O-M-G. His dimples! You know, I have a thing for dimples. He looked even more handsome in the dim lights. Whenever a romantic scene came, I pictured me and him. I knew I had to slow down, but I couldn't. Everything was going well, when suddenly, a very bad smell crawled into my nose. It was not bad, but disgusting. Worse than a rotten egg. Yeah, it was the smell of a fart. Our row had only four seats, and it was evident that someone among us had done the crime. It was so embarrassing. Worse still, my eyes teared up due to the stench. We all passed weird glances between us. Then Ellie said, Be frank. Who dealt it? I replied, Accept it, Yar. I know who it is. She replied, What is the proof? And I said, You're always doing it at home. She blushed bright red, and Brett laughed out loud. I never miss a chance to embarrass her. Little did I know, I had to pay such a huge price for this. She grinned at me, then said, well, everyone knows who ate potatoes today. Talk about embarrassing. Everyone, except me, obviously, laughed. And out of them all, Trent was the one who laughed the most. For the rest of the movie, Trent would look at me and laugh. Even more annoyingly, the fart culprit remained a mystery. Then, when we were on the way out of the cinema, I dropped my lipstick on the floor and had to bend down to pick it up. A big fart came out from me! Everyone in this world could hear it, and yep, including Trent, who was standing right behind me. They all laughed, and I just stood there, mortified. Worse still, they must think that the previous fart belonged to me too. But no! My fart didn't even have a smell. It was just like fresh air, and could be totally normal with no realization if it didn't sound like a bomb. That was the most awkward moment in my entire life. There was no way Trent would like me now. This sucked. As soon as I got home, I rushed up to my room and stayed there. I didn't want to see Ellie all smug. I didn't want to see anyone ever again. That night, I just lay on my bed and stared at the ceiling, concerned about how my life would go. Due to a nonsense fart, my crush had laughed at me, probably now hated me, and thought I was a loser. Now we could never be in a relationship together, or marry and have kids. Talk about a life ruiner! I'd end up some crazy cat lady, or even worse, stuck with this weird nerd at my college called Carson, the only person in this world who could ever like me! A message suddenly came. My heart flipped. It was from Trent. Is your stomach okay? This was so embarrassing. Would I ever live it down? It's not funny, smiley face, I messaged back. Then, to my surprise, he replied with, I just want to ask you out tomorrow. I have two tickets. It's a horror movie. Oh, damn. Not the cinema again. Was this a joke? Was he trying to humiliate me again? The cinema staff would remember my face, as I was the girl who created a bomb fart that everyone in the vicinity heard. I made up some excuse about having to study. This sucked, as it was a horror movie. 
And I know I just missed the chance to be a little weak cat in his arms, but what else could I do? To back up my story, I spent Saturday in the library. Yes, I know, talk about lame. This was so awful. It was a sunny day, but for sure, I had to pretend like I was super busy on something, in case him and my roomie ever talked and found out that I was just wrapping myself in my blanket feeling ashamed about my two farts. I sat down and flicked through a book, when Carson came and sat next to me. Yep, the nerd. He smiled at me, and I didn't want to be rude, so I smiled back. Suddenly, I heard a voice. So here you are crazy busy with another guy? It was Mr. Cutie himself, Trent. Turns out, he'd shown up with lunch and a coffee for me. I tried explaining to him that I didn't even know Carson that well. That's when Carson smiled over at me, grabbed my hand, then said, we spend every Saturday together at the library, and now we're official. I sat there, frozen. This was madness. By the time I realized Carson was still holding my hand and pulled it away, it was too late, as Trent had stormed off. Then, messages continuously popped up from my friends. You're with Carson? You guys are dating in the library? Seriously? I saw your picture. Carson the nerd posted it on Instagram with, studying on Saturday with my love. I checked my social media. Yep, Carson had just tagged me in a post with him. Now, as well as being the fart girl, Trent now also thinks I'm some sort of lying floozy. This is so not the case. I just want my happily ever after with him. Now what am I meant to do? Hey, it's Saskia, back again to tell you all about my not-so-successful love life. It started during a movie trip with my roomie Ellie, her annoying boyfriend Brett, and his dreamy friend Trent. Swoon! During the movie, someone let out a huge fart, and I ended up being blamed for it. Then, to make it worse, on leaving the cinema, I actually did fart. In front of everyone! I thought I'd blown it with Trent. Literally. So, when he asked me out on a date, my embarrassment made me turn him down. And instead, I went to the library to study. Only, while I was there, Trent appeared and saw me with my classmate Carson and came to the wrong conclusion. Worse still, now Carson seems to like me. Now my life's a mess and Trent isn't talking to me. So, after an evening spent watching way too many cheesy romance films and consuming far too much ice cream, I realized that my self-pity parade wasn't the answer. I mean, talk about tragedy. I just couldn't hide away. No, I had to hold my head up high and be as resilient as the characters from my favorite rom-coms were. So, the next day at college, I forced myself to look nice and smile as I trailed after Ellie and Brett. Ugh. Seeing as Brett was friends with Trent, I thought it'd be easier to get Brett to explain to him that nothing was going on between me and Carson. Why don't you tell him yourself? Brett rolled his eyes. No, I wasn't going to tell him that. I was too nervous to meet him. Why do I have to explain to him directly? You just act like I care about him. I blurted out to cover my embarrassment. And at that very moment, Trent appeared from nowhere. His uncomfortable face made it known that he'd heard everything. Then Brett smirked and said, Looks like I don't have to explain about Carson to Trent anymore. But would you like me to explain with him about your big loud fart the other night? I stood there, mortified. I knew Brett was a jerk, but did he really have to bring the fart situation up now? Now everyone was looking at me like I was a comedian. For the rest of the day, I tried to keep a low key. This was all Carson's fault. Why did he have to act like we were a couple? I needed to find him and tell him straight out that he was delusional. Only, I couldn't find him in class, the library, or anywhere else in college. So following Ellie's suggestion, at my lunchtime in the canteen, I messaged him saying, Why did you say all that stuff? After a while, he answered, I want to impress you, because I think that I kind of like you. He's gotta be kidding me! I spoke out loud at the same time as I stood up from my seat, without recalling that I was in the middle of a busy canteen. Oh, great. Now people looked at me like a weird person. Again, just in one day. I wanted to yell out, Nope! People, you've all got the wrong idea. The weird person here isn't me! It's the guy texting me right now! But getting back to reality, I sat down and mumbled sorry to everyone for my extra behavior. For real, if you like me, you should pursue me in the right way. Don't do such silly things like that. 
I wrote back. I thought that would be the end of it. Oh, how wrong I was. The messages from Carson didn't end. Instead, he bombarded me with questions, such as what's my favorite hobby? My favorite color? Food I liked? At first, I ignored the messages, but then he messaged me. I just want to be friends and learn more about you, as I truly care about you. If you want me to stop, then I will. Okay, so I felt kind of bad for him. As needy as Carson could be, he was a nice enough guy who didn't deserve the silent treatment, so I began messaging him back. And with Trent, things between us were terrible anyway. He basically acted like I didn't exist, and whenever he hung out with the others and I, he just scrolled through his phone so he didn't have to make eye contact with me. Talk about annoying! One day, tension between us even worsened. That time, I was sitting on the college lawn with the three of them, Trent, Brett, and Ellie, and Trent was ignoring me as usual, when out of nowhere, a girl appeared and angrily approached us. We all looked at Brett, as, let's face it, out of all of us, he was the most likely to mess up. But then the girl yelled at me. You're a bad person, Saskia. You stole Carson from me. She also added that she used to be Carson's girlfriend, but not anymore because Carson liked me. Ugh! What was going on? I didn't like Carson, I said, but she was assertive that her Carson was too good to reject, except that I had a boyfriend already. Before I had a chance to think up a reply, Brett said, besides Carson, who else can like Saskia? <laughs> right, Brett and his rude comment again, which made me want to kick him straight to the ground. I snapped back at him. For your information, there is a very handsome guy chasing me, and maybe someday I will accept him. As I finished speaking, I was startled as Trent suddenly stormed off. OMG! That was so terrible! Now Trent thought I had someone else! Ugh! Why was my life such a mess? Then, to make it worse, about one week later, I walked out of class to see this pretty girl in the hall called Amy. She was flirting with Trent. Right in front of my eyes! Jeez! Why were there so many people interfering with our love story? Ellie and Brett, who had no sensitivity about my feelings, adding the mess Carson and his ex left to me, now a girl wanted to steal Trent? Clearly, if it wasn't me, no one could help us. I needed to talk to Trent, without actually talking to him, as I sucked at doing this. So, taking inspiration from the genre of love, I decided to write a soppy letter. Yeah, you may say it's old-fashioned, but I say it's romantic. I was so absorbed in thought while I was walking to the lecture that I bumped into someone and dropped the letter in my hand. It was Amy, and she helped me pick it up. She saw Trent's name, and even a heart sign beside it. Cringe. Then she looked at me for a moment and said, I feel sorry for you, but I have to tell you that Trent has a girlfriend. What? I'm sure my heart actually sunk. Amy told me that she'd asked Trent out, and he turned her down because he liked someone else. I pictured Trent being all lovey-dovey with some other girl, and it made me feel so jealous. Naturally, I couldn't face my next lecture, so I skipped it and went home, with my undelivered love letter stuffed to the bottom of my bag. Later on that night, I went for a long walk to clear my head. That's when Carson messaged me. Why didn't you tell me that you have someone else? Why choose him? Why not me? Clearly, Carson's crazy ex had told him what I said. I wasn't in the mood for his messages right now. He'd caused me enough trouble. So I sent a clear message about my feelings. I lied. There's no other guy. Actually, I have one-sided feelings for Trent. I'm sorry. Carson didn't reply to me after that. Then Ellie called me, insisting I come to a party. Brett even yelled on the phone that I had to come because they were too wasted. It wasn't like I had anything better to do, so I searched for the location Ellie sent me. As soon as I was at the front of the house, I felt so confused. As the house seemed too quiet for a party, had Ellie sent me the wrong location? I mean, she didn't sound super drunk. Then the door opened. O-M-G. It was Trent! He walked out and asked me to follow him inside. The lighting was very dim, and no one was here. He took me to the middle of the kitchen, where I saw a small disco ball hang in the room ceiling. Suddenly, he took my hand in his hand, looked straight at me, and said the three words I never expected to hear from him. I like you. O-M-G. Did Trent really like me, or was I being pranked right now? My hand was trembling, and my silly thoughts even made me look around to see if anyone was hiding. But then he grinned at me. I guess you're stunned, but you should prepare for my next confession. He told me that Carson was his childhood friend. Carson teased Trent in the library because he knew Trent's feelings for me, but he didn't expect it to backfire. And to apologize, Carson offered to help Trent pursue me. First, Trent could pretend to be Carson to text and learn more about me. Then, to escalate the process, Carson asked a friend to pretend to be his ex. 
forcing me to speak out my feelings. Trent was so despaired by my response, so he decided to impersonate Carson one last time and sent that message to me, where he found out that I liked him. Immediately, Trent asked Ellie and Brett to help him out. Wow, this plan was definitely not normal, but the way he nervously admitted everything to me somehow made my heart flutter. I nodded my head as a sign of me forgiving him. Thanks, he smiled back. I saw his face in the middle of the dim flickering lights approaching mine slowly. This was it. Our first kiss was going to happen. But then I heard a great big fart. What? Brett, Ellie, and Carson appeared in the front door. They were all laughing hysterically, and Brett was holding a fart machine and said, Well, it's about time you two got together. Trent shooed them off. Then smiling, he said to me, Let's try that again, shall we? I nodded, and we kissed. Talk about butterflies! And that's how I ended up with the cutest boyfriend ever! Oh, wait, hang on a minute. My story hasn't finished yet, because that night when I returned home, I received a message from Trent telling me that he was the one who made the first fart in the cinema that time. He said sorry to me, but he was too embarrassed to admit it right away. Really? This was a shocker, but also hilarious, as if our story could become so complicated just because of a very simple thing. Moreover, if that day both me and Trent farted at the cinema, wasn't that our destiny? Oops, still not it. Wow, why do they have an entire room just for shoes? That's mental. I muttered to myself as I closed the door. I swear, that was like the twentieth door I'd opened. This place was insane. I had no idea which door would lead to my bedroom. To be honest, I've never been anywhere this lavish before in my entire life. Okay, it's now down to this door or that one over there. Wish me luck. But as I reached for the doorknob, I heard a voice. Hey, what prank you trying to pull on me again? I caught you red-handed this time, Gabby. Startled, I turned around, and, oh wow, there was this super cute guy standing there, looking so smug with himself. So this must be Jaden, the annoying big brother that Gabby had told me about. Only, he didn't seem annoying to me. But, right, I needed to stay in character, so I replied, Um, yeah, guess I was just too busy thinking about stuff that I didn't watch where I was going. Take it easy, bro. Then I immediately fled to the other room while Jaden watched me in confusion. Phew, that was a close one. And, wow, was Gabby a princess or something? She lived in a literal palace. Look at her room. Oh, you must be wondering. Yes, I'm not Gabby. I'm Nancy. So how come Jaden didn't realize that I was not his sister? Now, let me tell you, that's one wild story. I was just a normal teenager, living my peaceful life in the Missouri countryside. My family doesn't have a lot of money, so I worked part-time in a nearby diner, so I could save up for college. Yeah, it wasn't perfect, but I knew I was lucky to have my loving family. They're my everything. So, anyway, it wasn't uncommon for schools from St. Louis to arrange trips out here to show the kids what country life was like. And on days like those, the diner could get pretty hectic, and today was no exception. By the time my shift finished, I was a tired, sweaty mess, so I took the scenic route home to unwind. That's when I heard this girl screaming for help. She must have slipped and fell into this ditch. I quickly found a big branch to help pull her out of there. Then she brushed the dirt off her as she said, Thanks. But as she looked up at me, OMG, we both jumped up in such a fright that we almost stumbled back into the ditch. She looked exactly like me. I pinched myself to check I wasn't hallucinating or something. I mean, I was super exhausted from work. We stared at each other gormlessly for a bit. Then she suddenly reached out her hand and slapped me. Ouch! I raised my eyebrows at her, and she just grinned back. Oops, sorry. Just checking this isn't a dream. That's when I saw it. Her bracelet. 
The pendant on it was a strange shape. A strange shape like mine. I held up my wrist to slot my bracelet's pendant into hers, and it formed a butterfly. What's more, carved on the back of it was our birthday, November 3rd. Oh my god, no wonder why. I always asked my parents why they bought me such an ugly bracelet. Turns out it was two halves of a hole? She shrieked. So, do you think we're... twins? I was still in shock, but I managed to mutter out, Must be. She excitedly clapped her hands together, then pulled me into a hug. She said her name was Gabby, and her field trip was so dull that she wandered off, then ended up lost and stuck. Then I told her about my loving family, and she told me about her city life. I thought her life sounded awesome, but she didn't think so. Nah, it's seriously so boring over there. I just want a happy, drama-free life like yours. It makes sense now. I see why my parents love my brother more than me. I'm obviously adopted. But, hey, at least you have your friends and get to go to a good school. School? That's the worst part. I hate it. Then she paused and turned to me. Nancy, I have an amazing idea. How about we switch places? This was crazy. An hour ago, I thought I was an only child, and now I was staring at my twin. Gabby seemed adamant switching places was the best idea ever, as I'd get a taste of the city life while also helping her ace her upcoming exams. This did sound tempting. I mean, it wasn't every day your long-lost twin appeared and offered you the adventure of a lifetime, right? We didn't have much time to discuss it anymore, so we quickly switched clothes, phones, and further instructions about anything else would be discussed later over the phone. Then, I showed her the way to my house, and I headed toward the crowd of noisy students lining up for the bus back to the city. Suddenly, a girl tapped me on the shoulder and in an annoyed tone said, Er, uh, where have you been? Blonde hair, a pink hairband, and wearing a choker with a heart pendant on it? Yep, this must be Katie, Gabby's best friend. I followed her onto the bus, then yawned and told her I was exhausted. I feigned sleeping for the duration of the journey back so she wouldn't start any more convos with me. So after that, things went by smoothly. Until I got home and didn't know where I normally sleep at. But it's okay now, as I'm safe in Gabby's bedroom. The butler did knock on the door to ask me to come down for dinner. I know, the fact they have a butler is crazy but I just lied that I'd eaten loads on the field trip. There was no time for food now. I needed to learn as much as I could about these people. I searched her room and looked through her yearbooks, family photos, anything. I thought I was ready to go to school as Gabby tomorrow, but, well, as if it was that simple. The next morning, I nervously came downstairs to go to school, and of course, I had to face the entire family now. Upon seeing me, the small talks all came flying at me. How was yesterday's trip, dear? I managed to mumble out, Um, it, it was all right. Then suddenly, a hand rubbed my hair. Hey, I'm taking your PB&J, okay? You won't eat it anyway. I turned to look and saw him grinning at me before he headed outside. Oh gosh, I thought I'd melted into a puddle. He's so cute. I just wanted to follow him but then Dad cleared his throat. Gabriella, can we please make it a day free of complaints from your teachers? Oh God, Gabby, what had you possibly done? I gulped back, nodded in response, then hurried out of there. I awkwardly lingered in front of the mansion. This was the spot where the bus dropped me off yesterday, so hope this was how it worked. Then suddenly, a scary-looking guy pulled up on the other side of the street and yelled at me. Babe, what are you doing? Get in. Me? I was his babe? Oh, so he was Dylan, my sister's boyfriend. I walked over and reluctantly climbed on the back seat. Hey, what's wrong? Are you still mad at me for letting you go on the field trip alone? Come on, you said it was okay. I didn't know what to say to him, so I stayed quiet and stared out the window. Come on, babe. I mean, this is dumb. We both know how sitting in the back always gives you travel sickness. 
Gosh, I really needed to say something to shut this guy up, huh? No, it's totally fine between us. Um, it's just that I feel a bit under the weather. I need a little rest, that's all. And it's more spacey here. Well, that seemed to quiet him down, but I kept on catching him giving me odd looks in the rearview mirror. Look at him! Ugh! Gabby and I might be twins, but our tasting guys couldn't be any more different. Dylan looked like the bad boy type. Green hair, a nose ring, and drove some flashy sports car. While I prefer sweet and funny guys, like Jaden. But I didn't want to accidentally ruin my sister's relationship either. So when we got to school, I had to give him a peck on the cheek to make sure that we were cool. Yuck. His cologne stank. Luckily, I met Katie in the parking lot, so I followed her to class. Things were going great. At least, they were, until we got to Spanish class. The teacher, Mrs. Harrison, gave me this judgy look right from the moment I walked in. Turns out, Gabby hadn't handed in her homework, and she spent the whole of the last session painting her nails. Mrs. Harrison demanded to check my homework today. Well, of course, I didn't know I had homework. So, in a disappointed voice, she said, Gabby, it's been two years and you still don't know how to conjugate any single verb. Are you proud of that? Suddenly, I heard Katie whisper, But at least she knows how to dress, Mrs. Harrison. Your sweater looks like it should have been thrown out two years ago. Then some of the class giggled. Oh my god, Katie? That was so rude. But luckily, the teacher didn't hear that. I quickly apologized to Mrs. Harrison and told her to just give me a pop quiz to make up for my missing homework. She did. And to her, and the whole class's total surprise, I slayed all the questions. After class, I told Katie that her comment about Mrs. Harrison wasn't cool. Laughing, she replied, Jeez, why are you so uptight today? But on seeing my unfaltering expression, she quickly changed the subject. You've still got to help me with the plan, okay? You promised. She winked at me. What? What plan? In confusion, I faked a smile at Katie. Oh, don't you worry, girl. I got it all set. That night, Gabby called me and we updated each other on our first day. Things went better than expected. Apparently, she loved it there. And she felt so warm and connected with mom and dad. And she was sure that they were our real parents. She also enjoyed feeding the chickens and apple picking in the backyard. However, she did almost get me fired from work as she didn't know how to use the oven, but she managed to charm her way out of it. I told her how I'd handled the Dylan situation and made peace with Mrs. Harrison. But, oh, Gabby, Katie did mention to me about some plan? What is it? Oh, yeah, I promised to set her up with Jaden. I guess you'll have to carry it out for me now. My heart sank as I said, Jaden? As in, your brother Jaden? Yeah, now not biologically. It's no wonder I just couldn't get along with him. Not like us, right? I forced a laugh and changed the subject. But, oh no. Jaden was far more suited to me than rebellious Katie. But, okay, this was Gabby's life, so I needed to make sure I didn't mess it up. And maybe, when this twinning truth broke out, I'd get my chance with Jaden. For now, we agreed to continue living each other's lives. I suppose it was pretty easy, seeing as all Gabby seemed to do was hang out with her friends and avoid doing her homework. The only part I didn't like was setting Katie up with Jaden. And that's when things got complicated. Will we ever tell everyone the truth? Or this life swap is too much fun to stop? Stay tuned for part two to find out. It's me again, Nancy. Only, I'm currently pretending to be my long-lost identical twin, Gabby. After a chance meeting with her, she was now living my life in the countryside, and I was living hers in the city. One snag, I was crushing on her adoptive brother, Jaden. But Gabby's best friend, Katie, also wanted me to set her up with him. What a bummer, huh? Katie insisted that I convince Jaden to tutor her on Saturday. The excuse being she had some super important physics exam. 
So, with my most enthusiastic voice, I went to ask him to help her. And surprisingly, Jaden found it a great idea. You should sit in too. Dad will be so stoked if you manage to get something above an F next time. Oh wow, Jaden is just the sweetest. I don't get why Gabby complains about him. So, as planned, at 3 p.m. sharp, Katie appears at our door, wearing this flashy off-the-shoulder dress that would have best suited a nightclub or something. Upon seeing her, Jaden chuckled and said, Oh, what's the occasion? Katie blushed and smiled back. But before she could speak up, I chimed in. Katie's afraid your physics class would be too boring, so she wanted to add some colors. Jaden laughed and told us to follow him upstairs to study. Katie obviously wasn't happy with my ad lib. She frowned at me and mouthed, What the heck was that? And I just gave her two big thumbs up and acted as if I was being an amazing wing girl. We sat around a desk and Jaden started to explain physics stuff. This was so easy, but Katie kept leaning in closer to him and asked him some dumb questions while playing with her hair. I swear, the hair twirling was an act, but her not understanding any of these symbols was real. I soon got tired of playing dumb, so I jumped in and explained it instead, and Jaden looked impressed. Okay, this was fun. Katie shot me a dirty look. Gabby, don't you have a manicure at five? Then she kicked my leg under the desk. Stay. You're racing it. Jaden grinned at me. Those nails can wait. You're only one F away from dad's tantrum, and I don't want to witness that. Then he turned to Katie. You should encourage each other to do better. Then we went back to the lesson. I could tell how furious Katie was, as she was crumpling up the edges of a page on her notepad. I was secretly celebrating my little win. Then my phone rang. It was Dylan, and he sounded kind of mad. Oh my god, I'd totally forgotten that Gabby had told me about today's big date at a fancy restaurant for their sixth month anniversary. Oops, I didn't want to go on a date with Dylan and leave Jaden here with Katie. Ugh! But I couldn't let Gabby down, so I quickly changed outfits, grabbed the gift she'd bought for him, then left. I arrived at the restaurant to see him lingering about outside, looking sulky so I had to make up some excuse. Sorry, honey, I just wanted to look good for you. Then gave him a kiss on the cheek. Yuck, he was wearing even more cologne this time. Inside, I feigned interest in the menu so I wouldn't have to talk to him. I didn't want to mess my sister's relationship up, but I had nothing in common with this guy. Suddenly, his phone rang out. Hang on, was that a Youngblood song? Sorry, babe, I forgot to put it back on silent. I love Youngblood. His new song is so catchy. We should make a TikTok to it. He gave me an odd look. But you always hate this kind of music. Thinking quick, I replied, I guess your music tastes must be rubbing off on me. He looked extra happy, then took my hand, which startled me a little, but that was a good icebreaker. I felt much more comfortable talking to him after that. Okay, so regardless of his clothes and hair, he was actually a pretty sweet guy, and it was obvious that he really cares for Gabby. We had a lot of fun, and then he dropped me off at home. And obviously, like any couple that had been dating for months, he went in for a kiss, and I started to panic again. For your information, I haven't had my first kiss yet, and I didn't want it to be with my sister's boyfriend. I gave him a kiss on the cheek again, then fake coughing, I told him the cold the other day hadn't worn off yet, and I didn't want to pass it to him. Phew, luckily he bought it. Then he just gave me a kiss on the forehead and wished me goodnight. Phew, it was such a day. I threw myself onto the bed and was about to call Gabby for an update when Katie called. She moaned at me for being unhelpful on her date. Then she demanded I rearrange another one to make it up to her. So, another tutor session with math? I suggested, with zero effort whatsoever. No thanks, I'm tired of it. Gabby, you literally did no help today. This is the chance to redeem yourself. I trust you. Then she hung up, leaving me at a dead end. So I phoned Gabby for advice, and she told me to book them at a date at Jaden's favorite restaurant or something. 
Then, Gabby must have noticed how unenthusiastic I sounded. She added, Oh, and Nancy, I know Katie loves to do the whole mean girl act, but underneath it all, she's actually pretty sensitive and has always been a good friend to me. So please make this work for her. <sighs> okay. So I needed to be less Nancy and more Gabby, as Katie deserved to have a loyal, caring best friend. So I made a reservation, sent Katie the time and place, then told Jaden about it. And now I just sit back and let them meet up and flirt and... I mean, there's nothing I could do. It's not like I was going to stalk them or anything. Um, but yeah, that's exactly what I ended up doing. I didn't mean to but the thought of them being together just driving me nuts. So there I was, strategically placing myself behind a pillar in the restaurant, trying to stalk them. Then all of a sudden, someone threw an apron at me. Ahem, <clears throat> what are you doing? The place is packed and you decide to just stand here flirting with the pillar or what? Get to work! I turned to see the waiter who had just talked to me rush off to take another order. Wait a minute. Did he just think I was a waitress because my shirt looked similar to their uniform? If so, then let the fun begin. I quickly put on the apron, lowered my hat, and hovered around the kitchen window, trying to find Jaden and Katie's order. There it was. Now, let's add extra spice on Katie's ravioli. It didn't take long for their food to come out, and Katie started coughing like crazy, having a taste of her food. Ha! But... Joke on me, that only gave her a platform to act up and make Jaden take better care of her. He even held a forkful of his steak out to her, and I watched her lean in and eat it. Ugh! Later on, when the waiter walked away with their dessert order, I waited for a sec before running after him and said, Hey, Table 17 just asked to change the chocolate cake to peanut butter cheesecake. They just told me. Then he just fixed the order without a doubt. Katie seemed to hate peanut butter so much. She made sure to let everybody know that every time we went to eat something. Well, Jaden loved PB&J, so by this way, he would see what an annoying picky eater she was. After that, I lingered at a corner, pretending to wipe tables to stay out of sight, while keeping an eye on them. And as expected, Katie jumped off her seat and started yelling at the waiter after taking a sniff of the cake. The waiter looked puzzled, then looked around, searching for something. Suddenly, he pointed at me. Hey, are you sure about the order? You were the one who told me that they switched the cakes. I froze as all the eyes were now on me. Gabby, I can't believe this. Why are you ruining this for me? Katie charged towards me. You, you know how bad my peanut allergy is. I could have ended up in the hospital. I don't know you anymore, Gabby. Then she stormed off. Oh my god, I really didn't know that. I didn't mean to hurt Katie that way. Jaden then quickly paid the bill, then grunted at me. We're going home. He didn't say a single word to me on the way home. He just went straight to his room and slammed the door. I stood outside of his room and kept on apologizing. He finally opened it and yelled at me. What's up with you? You've reached new levels of weird lately? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. I thought you'd finally changed for the better. But, well, turns out you're still the same spoiled brat you always were. Just do whatever you want without a second thought. No, it's not like that. It was an accident. I... Oh, really? Then what is it like? It's like... I have a crush on you, Jaden. I just can't bear seeing you with other girls. What? Are you crazy? This better not be some kind of prank, Gabby. You're my sister. No, I'm not. I'm not Gabby. I'm her twin, Nancy. And FYI, both Gabby and I aren't your biological sister either. Jaden looked at me, jaw dropped. Then I felt a hand on my shoulder. Gabby? What did you just say? It was Mum. She looked so perplexed, and tears were already welling up. We had an emergency family meeting, where I told them all about my chance meeting with Gabby, switching places, and how she believed she was adopted as they favored Jaden over her. So now she's with our biological parents in the countryside. 
To say they looked shocked was an understatement. Then Mum took my hand and said, Sweetie, it's time you learned the truth. Then she told me how twelve years ago, during a family picnic, I wandered off and got lost. They tried searching for me, but to no result. But now, here I was. I'd found my way back to them. They also mentioned that it wasn't that they loved Jaden more. They were stricter with Gabby because she was rebellious when it came to her studies. It pains me to know she thinks we love her less. Dad sighed, then Mum turned to me, cupped my face with her hands. Oh God, my poor Abby. I can't believe you're here with us now. Abby? So my real name was Abigail? I choked up. Things then got emotional. There was a lot of hugging and sobbing. It was an emo overload. So let's go pick up your sister, shall we? Dad patted on my shoulder and told everyone to get changed. Then we hit the road right away. It may have already been 10 p.m., but this couldn't wait. On the ride, I started to calm down and let the truth get to me as I took one good look at everyone. So these were my real parents? And that meant Jaden was my real brother too? Man, now that's embarrassing. I pulled out my phone to give Gabby a heads up that we were coming and didn't forget to add a, you are so not going to believe what actually happened. I was expecting her to call me right back. But instead, she just replied with, I bet you I will believe it. Huh? We arrived at my house and my parents rushed out to me and hugged me tightly. It turns out, they figured out that Gabby was an imposter pretty quickly, but she's still enjoying this farming life so much that she decided to hang around a bit more before telling me. Sorry, Nancy, but it didn't take long for mom and dad to notice how her daughter suddenly doesn't know how to fry an egg anymore. Then everybody laughed. We all squeezed around the kitchen table and caught up on everything. Oh boy, it got emotional again. I think we all cried enough tears to fill a lake. It was so good to see my parents again. Even though they weren't my biological parents, they loved and cared for me, despite all the money struggles. Now that we're reunited, I've officially moved back in the city with Gabby, and we now go to school together. We still come out to the countryside every weekend and spend some quality time with my adoptive parents, who, turns out, Gabby loves just as much as I do. And thanks to my biological parents, they now have the bountiful ranch they always dreamed of. It all fell into place in the end, and I couldn't be happier. Except for the little awkward moments with Jaden. <laughs> Thinking back about that, it was so dumb. Maybe I'll help Katie properly this time. As, to be honest, they'd make a pretty cute couple. But she better set me up with another cute guy in return.